Yeah! A glitter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Bassmaster Live, second stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole. Lake Seminole, legendary. We started our season last week, a week ago, at a legendary place, Lake Okeechobee. And Mark Zona, from what the weather has been telling us, what the calendar tells us, and what some of the guys who should know tell us, we ought to be pretty happy to be landing here at Lake Seminole this week. Uh, I think you're right about that, Tommy Sanders. It is a rarity in the month of February to get four premium weather fishing days where for all the arrows pointing towards, they are coming to the bank. Talking to guys, locals like Drew Benton, Drew Cook, they made the comment, oh, they're going to get caught in a big, big way and really Every time we come to Lake Seminole, the one thing that you could say about this lake, the grass is in perfect condition. In fact, Tommy, I don't think I've ever heard this in a Bassmaster tournament. A few anglers saying there's just too much grass in the lake right now. <laughs> so uh, look for big things this morning. Every time we come to Lake Seminole, big, big stringers. Absolutely. Some of the scenes from earlier this morning at the Earl May Boat Basin, Bainbridge, Georgia, are fantastic host community here. We are just about ready to show you some fishing. First, we will have our Minn Kota unlock the lake and we go down here to the to the Flora, Georgia, Bama line basically for Lake Seminole. And it's been impounded back since the 1950s and very shortly after that became one of those legendary big bass destinations. Exactly, taking a look at your Minn Kota unlock the lake. If you look to the right and I heard Ronnie and the Sooch talking about it. You're looking at the Flint River, and then on the west side of the lake, you're looking at the Hooch, not to be confused with the Sooch, and right in the middle of that where it all comes together, about in the middle of your screen, you'll see Fish Pond Drain and Spring Creek, and really, Tommy, every single tournament that whether we have covered here or other professional tournaments, where the Flint, the Hooch, meet Spring Creek, always the region that goes down. Look for that to be a big player yet again. We got seven hours of coverage coming up for you right here on Bassmaster.com on Bassmaster Live. And I'm Mark Zona. I'm, on, I'm with Mark Zona here. That is Mark Zona, actually. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. And uh, Mark Zona, I've been a decade since we've been here. We really enjoyed our trip here the last time around, which featured big, big weights, especially at the top of our leaderboard, including a 30 pound bag on the first day. Uh, I'm not going to speculate on what's going to happen today, but I think they're going to catch him. I think they're going to catch him. And Tommy, what was interesting about that tournament a few years ago, Shaw Grigsby, we thought that was going to be a big time sight fishing blowout tournament. Shaw Grigsby doing most of his damage on a lipless crank. And the one thing to really watch this morning, guys like Drew Benton, Drew Cook, who are some of the best sight fishermen on the Bassmaster Elite Series, both of them not starting out sight fishing is what they told us yesterday. They have one of those one cast spots one of the clear areas in all of that hydrilla and milfoil and the best way to put it i have never heard drew benton as excited for the one spot that he found early in practice on monday we're going to show you some pictures right now of an incident that happened uh I, we assume there in the flint river uh, everyone has to run down the flint river from our launch there in bainbridge georgia and a kind of a disturbing picture yes of course and we believe that ronnie moore to be the boat of ray hanselman is that correct yes it looks like ray hanselman it looks like Cole Sands is there. He must have been beached to help as well. You see a lot of anglers, Stetson Blaylock, John Cox, Brandon Lester. I don't want to miss anybody, but to name a few guys stopping off in the river to help get the boat turned around and put back into the water. You see a whole big group of them. Very cool. Buddy Gross looks like right there as well. Marshall's helping. It's a dicey deal, Zona, and you've been here in the Flint River running down there. There's no fog to deal with, but when there's fog present, when it's narrow and there's waves, sometimes you get out of that main channel and you can hit something or you can just take a wave on the wrong corner and you end up out of the water. Yes, um, that, that is not a good sight to see, hoping that everybody, obviously hoping everybody is okay. It looks Amazing. like it as of right there from the pictures. But what you're talking about there, Ronnie, that is a big factor here on Lake Seminole. Got to talk to John Cox, who John Cox will go anywhere with his boat. Actually, get ready for this, Tommy. Ripped a four-foot hole 
wow. in the bottom of his boat early this week. Said, I have never been scared that I was going to sink. Uh, actually got it welded and put back together. But uh, definitely a lot of hazards on Lake Seminole. Again, hoping everybody definitely okay with this situation early here on day one. Yeah, that's absolutely. And we, we will have to confirm everything that no one's heard. It doesn't appear to be the case here. But that, of course, is our, our chief and basically only concern at this point right here. After the after we establish that, then we'll worry about getting these guys back fishing again. And some of our Go. some of our guys on the water there that have our eyes, like Steve Bowman, have been made aware, and they said they are back fishing. Everyone is fine. Good. All the anglers who stopped, thank you so much. We've had incidents before where anglers are on their own, and it's good to see the field on their way to start their tournament. Stop and help a friend out, get back going, and make sure everyone's safe. All right, but well, we've got anglers fishing right now. We see that familiar yeah. name, Wing Gates. We'll get to that in just a moment. And here's one of our two prohibitive local favorites here. Drew Cook of Cairo, Georgia, grew up just south of here in Florida and list this is his home lake. Coming off a top yeah, ten to finish buy. last week at Okeechobee, a man with some momentum. Yes, some of course local knowledge in his favor as well. Hair grass got blown in on this little hard spot. Uh, sometime last night, I reckon. Uh, it's making it really hard to fish my Aruku shad through it. Um, so we're kind of kind of just trying to figure something out here. See if we can catch them on something else. Um, Fortunate enough, we got to start on it. Me and Benton both got to start on where we wanted to. Um, and it could be, a lot of these fish could have swam to the bank, you know, last night. I was concerned about that. Um, but when they didn't, they were still here yesterday afternoon. I thought we were gonna be all right. And it might, I mean, every time I've caught them up here, the wind's been blowing pretty good, so maybe once this wind gets up, they might set up a little bit better. One thing to watch with Drew Cook, Drew Benton, little bit with Brian New, a lot of them really kind of focusing near that main channel, near the main river of the Flint. One of the biggest problems throughout practice, even though weather has been fantastic as far as temps go, boy, it has blown. It has been a windy practice for these anglers trying to get around on Seminole. Going to have a little bit of wind today and then as we get into Friday all the way into the weekend looks Pretty mild winds and should set up perfectly. But the main thing Drew Cook and, and Benton focusing on, little hard spots, very, very shallow. Um, they pulled a lot of water out of this lake on Monday, about a foot of water, which makes 
you know, a lot of these two to three foot flats, these hard areas that Cook and Benton are focusing on, they did not have a lot of water on them Tuesday and Wednesday, but very small, isolated, one cast hard spots in the middle of all that high drill out there. Four of the six anglers will be with all day today. Drew Cook hooked up again. Golly. He barely got one hook. He had two of them. Got some more in that time. Got some more in that time. No big ones. Two and a quarter. Clark Wendland, who was second last week, starts off with a three and a half pounder, and Mike Iconelli, biggest fish of the day so far, a 4 0. Second fish from Drew should put him in the lead, mm -hmm. at least for the time being, early on, catching him fast. Good, though, man. Mm, so good. Set up water temps. Starting this week, Tommy, looking at about 61 degrees on Monday. Yesterday, getting all the way up, it was getting to talk to a lot of the anglers after you guys did the pre-show yesterday. A lot of the anglers saying, it was starting to average out around mid 60s all the way up to heard one angler talking about seeing 69 degree water temp yesterday afternoon. An unusually cold winter before that and uh, Drew Cook again tells us that's pretty much the ideal situation to have cold weather many uh, below freezing days leading up to a big warming trend. That and that's the natural way that all this grass gets knocked back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But with the way they've had this quote unquote false spring the last two weeks of warm weather, that grass has been able to throw, thrive as well. But there's some places on this lake, even when it gets really cold in the winter, it can't knock that grass back hardly. So some places will be thicker than others. We'll see if we get to see some anglers in those regions or not. Most of our six that we are covering, you just noticed there, still in the Flint River. Now to John Cox. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, so, you know, uh, we're live, you know, so that's a plus. Uh, this lake is beautiful, but it's also a dangerous lake, uh, you know, with a lot of timber and stuff, but in uh, windy rivers. But, uh, you know, we made it to our area. It's pretty packed. Uh, Ray, I think, maybe cut a corner a little too sharp and uh, drove up in the bushes, but uh, luckily he didn't hit any trees or whatever, and we all stopped and got him out of there. And, uh, I mean, you know, it was kind of cool with everybody this morning, you know, even though we're all racing to, you know, we were racing to an eight, nine pounder, and uh, I'm sure the other guys were going to some big fish, you know, it was kind of neat that everybody stopped and, you know, cause the most number one thing is that we all make it home to our families and, you know, but we started, there's quite a few boats here. I, you know, Okeechobee, I kind of, I, I kind of stayed out of the crowd. I feel terrible trolling by people and being right next to them. And um, I just, I just don't like doing it. So Okeechobee, I kind of stayed, away from everybody and it when I really struggled. So uh, this tournament, I figured, you know, everything's fishing small and I'm just gonna get up in them and uh, hopefully those guys aren't too mad. But uh, the one, the only one I wanted to stop on, Bob asked me nicely not to catch that one yet. So he went over to it and maybe he's gonna catch it, but we're just gonna try a couple in here and then we're gonna get out of here. Well, that's good to hear to confirm that uh, no one hurt and that uh mishap Ray Hanselman there and he is back in the water and fishing 
never been a free throw to get around here on Lake Seminole and a big hurricane in 2018 distributed a lot more logs and snags and so forth well, and, around the place. And some places like Mark Zona was mentioning that John Cox in, you know, uh, I guess came in contact with in practice, even in some of those channels, they're still marked with rebar or have rebar in them. Yeah. So it's not just the timber that's there's, you know, man made things that are here to warn others that when they get broken off over the years, now they're just below the surface and can leave a little gash or a scratch, maybe even cause some water to enter your boat. Yeah. And, and <laughs> one of the things that it's not funny, but I asked John, I said, John, have you ever done that before where you've, he said, Oh yeah, I've, 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 popped holes in my boat many 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 times he goes just never to the level that i did this week <laughs> where he said it is amazing uh what he learned early this week it, he said it's amazing how quickly you could sink with a four foot hole in your hull <laughs> i said actually no that's not amazing it's actually... <laughs> he sailed him in more than four feet of water so he had that going for yeah him going in I, I guess i guess one surprising thing with john cox and we were you know obviously we throw darts on on who to cover, you know, the first days of the Elite Series tournament. I, John Cox has only cashed. He has fished a ton of tournaments here. He has only cashed one check here in his in his career. Huh. <laughs> oh, that was first cast. I don't know if that was good or bad. I'm not sure. It might have been bad, but oh well, we'll take him. I wasn't going to come back here. I wanted to stop on that one, but it's hard when we're already in here. We might as well take some fish before we go. Never know. We might go back and Bob might have given up on that big one. Really taking a look at our map so far this morning. Anglers are pretty much dispersed out pretty well. A lot of the attention, the south side of the Flint, where we got to see the last time the Bass Masters was here was a big player. And Spring Creek, not that many anglers, only about a it's about four or five boats in the hooch this morning. Mm. Staying in the Flint River for now. Let's take it over to Kyle Welcher. Alabama resident. He lists Lake Eufaula as his home lake up the upriver on the Chattahoochee. Mm. I didn't come up here and show himself, didn't he? He's short. Two and a half pounder. We'll take it. We'll take it to start. Yep. Got two local favorites, as we mentioned here, big time local favorites, good anglers who had their start and their their development here on Lake Seminole. One of them is Drew Benton. He's been out here eight years. Of course, it's been nine years since we fished here. So as an elite, this will be his first shot at it. Drew Benton on Lake Seminole. So Lake Seminole is really the convergence of two major rivers here in South Georgia. It's the convergence of the Chattahoochee River and the Flint River. Four main areas. You've got the Hooch, um, you got Fish Pond Drain, Spring Creek, and Flint River. Uh, the Flint is where we're taken out of. 
You can do so many different things here. You can go live scoping the timber, you know, in, in Spring Creek in the clear water. You can, you can go up look for spawners. This lake actually sets up a lot more like the Tennessee River. Like it's, it's more of those grass flats, offshore grass, ditches. So as far as the strategy wise, it's gonna take moving and adjusting through the tournament. Like uh, there's some pre-spawn stuff happening, some spawn stuff, we're just on the very kind of cutting edge of it, like the beginning of it. It's gonna take some moving around and jumping around. And I'm gonna say 84 pounds, seven ounces. The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Another week and another great legendary lake to have our second event of the Bassmaster Elite Series 2023. The Eagle is soaring on Lake Seminole. About that, there can be no doubt. Oh, we got something happening oh, there. I something thought he was dead yeah, in the water. Ray Hanselman up for a second there no, where he no, was no. flying. Missed that one. He's the symbol of our country there who really likes to find dead stuff flying around. Doesn't like to run <laughs> stuff down. That's what an Eagle does. Also in the woods this morning, thank goodness no one got hurt in this little incident right here with Ray Hanselman shortly after takeoff. Uh, got a little sideways there. But luckily, uh, they got the boat. Of course, Ray not hurt. This, whoever was with him, if he had a marshal, we're not sure yet, but we know that no one was hurt. The boat, with a lot of help from the fellow anglers, as is always the case, being put back in the water, and Ray will set about his job that he started out to do today before being sidetracked so rudely. He was solo, no marshal with him, which, okay. I mean, either way, but we see marshals and anglers. I would say probably six to eight, six to ten anglers stopped to help. And like John Cox said, just it's not something you want to see up ahead when you see a boat take, no. a, take a hard left no. and there's no water Scary. where he's going. Drew and Drew right there. We've seen Drew Cook in action, put a couple of good fish in the boat so far. Let's check out Drew Benton also from this area. Lives over on the Florida side. In this little spot right here, Tommy Drew Benton really confident in it, was terrified that other anglers might have found it. No big ones off of this spot yet. Really, it's just a little, a little better. Little hard spot surrounded with eel grass and hydrilla. Still not what we want. They getting bigger. Yeah. That's a post spawner. Look how skinny. Maybe I had to ch change casting angles. You know, and really one of the big advantages you're gonna see with Benton and Cook this week, <laughs> obviously knowing little stop signs like this, post-spawn and pre-spawn fish, moving through a lot of these hard areas, Tommy, but one of the things Another that- Another tiny one. Big, big advantage is knowing those little pockets, those little drains that they can pull into and sight fish one or two bass. Yeah, he's 13. Hey, throw him back. Drew Benton has been a player out of here ever since he came out in 2016. He was the rookie of the year. During that year, well known as a, an ace sight fisherman for sure. Talented in many other ways, owns one victory on Lake Travis well, back in 2018. We to, but I'm afraid these nice days have made these go to the bank behind me. The good news is we know where they went. <laughs> the question will be if, if more will replace them. I've caught four little bitty ones, and they're all like, Real pale white, like they just got up here. This is just a stopping place before they go into these canals behind me to spawn. And uh, boy, in practice, you get right quick right here, but it don't seem to be the case this morning. But I kind of felt like this 
could potentially happen. So we got some different stuff we can do. But I had to keep it honest this morning. I mean, I was really planning on beating their heads in right here this morning, to be honest. It just didn't work out. First, I thought they might have just moved over here on the side because I come over here on the side of it. It got pounded by wind all day yesterday, and I thought they might have moved out of it because it's real shallow up there where they're, they were sitting. And they may have just got over here on the side somewhere. We just haven't relocated them yet. actually talked about exactly that with Drew Benton. We've Let's covered him so many years, feet. Tommy, and Drew Benton making the comment, he really felt his advantage and Drew Cook's advantage was going to be if this tournament, if this tournament stayed cold, where these groups of fish, you know, were, weren't broke up. And you can hear right there, Drew Benton with so much confidence in the starting spot. It has been warm so long and consistent now. A lot of these fish on these little hard spots seems like they have broken up a lot and going to the bank. Z, we talked about being a local favorite and you'd like it to fish a little tougher for your home body of water. So the little intricacies you may know help you a little bit more than when it's fishing wide open. Even with the great weather and the, the great expectations this week, it is kind of a little tough because it is groups of fish in 10 feet of water that are now headed to the bank or groups in 20 feet that are now pulling up to 10. So every day, every angler's unsure of what they have. So these guys may end up actually like thriving a little more with those deals or knowing where they could go if they left this spot. Well, it, it, it's weird. Th this lake is, even just looking at this picture right here with Benton and Cook, this lake just has that, that Gunnersville vibe. You know what I mean? Where you, you get on a lot of those flats, you know, in the in the mid lake region of Gunnersville around Seabold and, you know, working up the lake on Gunner, where, where, man, when it's cold, there's just, you know, dozen fish schools of big pre-spawn females. And I think that's exactly what Benton and Cook got on the first day of practice. But as it's gone on, it's gone away. And, and really what Benton said was, what he didn't want for this tournament was it to warm up to where everybody's going to catch them. Skeeter Boats, oh, big what? fish alert. All right. Guy who finished sixth place last week, Carl Jacobson, with a five and a half pounder. He's tied for third with that weight. Carl with a good tournament, Okeechobee. Drew Cook as well, top 10 there. Drew Benton, tough. 68th. And he's, he has a national tour level victory at Okeechobee. Granted, it was way back in the day, you know, where it's much different than it is now, but you feel a little bit better when you roll into a place you, you're familiar, but it doesn't work out. It's, it's frustrating. Another guy last week, Clark Wendland's got uh, three fish for six pounds. He's in second place to another veteran Gosh. who's won here before. I left it. I left it. I told Ronnie I gave him that pick early in the week, and I left it and took John Cox. Totally scared. I, I just cannot get traction with the whole fantasy thing this year so far. Can't do it. Understandable, Z. I will leave that wheelhouse to a one Craig Herrera again. We no, we don't, no, that's wrong. We don't know. The, or Fox, okay. Fox Weatherman. Well, he's big on it. These guys both may have had Georgia on their home town listing on Bassmaster.com. That is all recent moves to the state or purchasing land, a farm, things like that. But Drew Cook just 20 minutes south of here, roughly in the Midway or Quincy, Florida region. And then Drew Benton, obviously Panama City, Florida. He's been back and forth between Georgia and there. So these guys, this is, this is their place and their wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. There's a little matchup between the two right there and career. Dimensions there, both have a win with the Bassmaster Elite Series, both own Rookie of the Year titles. Uh, Drew Benton's been out here longer, thus more top tens. Drew Cook, an amazing number of top tens for uh, his first four years of fishing, and now, well, he added one this year.
and classic appearances almost tied up there and they'll both go up one obviously this is waiting you know anticipation of the classic next they'll both they've qualified yep. for the classic in almost I think each of their seasons on the elite series I believe that's right let's go over to Kyle Welcher whom I said he said you you follow his home I'm sorry it was another lake further up on the Chattahoochee Harding Lake Harding, is actually yes. his home lake. okay yeah okay get that straight Kyle Welcher Cole yeah, Simmons right there and, and one strange thing, talking to Kyle Welcher yesterday, Ronnie, you'll love this. You, we thought when, you know, boy, this one really sets up good for Kyle Welcher, the way he fishes and, you know, how he cut his teeth in Alabama and, and it made the comment. I said, this, this lake sets up good for you, doesn't it, Kyle? No, not at all. <laughs> Does not set up good for me at all. <laughs> Kyle, a runner up at the Academy Sports and Outdoors I Bassmaster Classic last year. Do we really know Kyle Welcher yet? He Tommy is a he too? Tommy. Kyle he's elusive. He two. is. Well, some people like to remain sort of mysterious. Yeah, he is. He really is. Under the radar, he can catch him. We know that. As a professional gambler, he would probably know well how to play him close to the vest. That's right. I guess one thing that surprised me was Welcher making the comment that he does not like these, you know, mid-range offshore grass style tournaments, which mm. you would think we've covered him on Gunnersville before. And granted, he was way up the river in that tournament, but said he does not like that, mm. you know, needle in a haystack event like we could end up having here. Tyler Rivette to his right there, our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader for 2023 based on his big win at Lake Okeechobee just a few days ago. Bob Downey jumps up to second place with a couple nice uh, four pounders. Oh, oh Bob. Chapstick fell out of my pocket. I found it. Tyler Vett's first time here on Lake Seminole. So hard to get around if you don't know this lake very well, especially, you know, you get in that area where Spring meets Spring Creek meets the Flint. Just being a local, knowing how to run that stuff. To where you don't have to idle 30 percent of your day mm -hmm. big big advantage for your local fishermen here glad ray is good i'm glad i didn't watch it happen New is currently sucking, but we got a lot of Mike Iaconelli just finished his limit. He's got 15 pounds, a couple four pounders in there. Going chatterbait right now. It's a big spawning area, you know, backwaters here and just up shallow too. I think they would spawn out here as well. Um, there's a big bar that runs out here and there's a, a channel that runs between us and the bank over there. Bunch of pad stems up there. And you got some coontail and hydrilla mixed in along between the pads and the in the ditch. And uh, I did I caught a big one here in practice? Uh, I think you know I think they were pre-spawned because it was out in the grass a little deeper. But I also got some bites up shallow, pretty close to here, that I feel like were probably spawners. But right now we're going to try to catch what I feel like would be pre-spawners and hopefully it goes well and we'll go from there. Brian new third year man on the Bassmaster Elite Series great season last year 15th and progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points had a rough start down at Lake Okeechobee but uh, we we can be sure he's got a plan 
We're here at Seminole. He shares it with us on Bass Pro Shops Top Lures. All right, so here we are at Lake Seminole. Man, this is a very special place to me. And I've done a lot of this in the past here, and I've done, I have done well. I've caught a lot of big ones doing this. Is, you know, fishing a, a frog, like a Spro Bronze Eye. Um, the new Spro Flapping Frog is really awesome. I'm gonna be throwing that a lot when I'm trying to cover more water. It's more of a reeling frog. Um, and when I'm slowing down, you know, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna flip that Zooms Linky around that I use at St. John's and uh, to get that first blue trophy. Any cast, you'd catch a seven or eight pounder and, uh, you know, you pull into the right place, you'd catch three or four or five of them and uh, you you get right in a hurry here. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Yes, day one on Lake Seminole, second stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. What a legendary place. Things are popping already. That was pretty much expected from the way that conditions were leading us into this second stop of the year. Look at Mike Iaconelli on top there. We talked to Mike Iaconelli on a different subject before the season. He said, I've rededicated myself to getting a good start here. Fished a lot down in Florida, made the cut last week, and look at him now with almost 20 pounds on day number wow. one. We got a great top 10 leaderboard. We have a great colleague out there, Mark Zona. It's our own Davey Height. And, uh, you know, Davey's been talking to anglers at the ramp for two days solid. Davey, what, uh, what's your final takeaway as we get started now with the actual fishing? Well, obviously, uh, talking to those anglers pre-tournament, you get a lot of, uh, well, maybe this, maybe that, I'm not really doing this. You get a lot of vague answers, that's for sure. But but I did get some straight talk this morning from Drew Cook and Drew Benton, uh, John Cox, some of those guys, and I think we're going to see a lot of fish catches, especially later in the day when those guys move from fishing some of this offshore stuff to going up and fishing for some of those fish they can see on the beds. Davey, this is what we talked about it a little bit in the pre-show yesterday this is one of those tournaments with the weather that it should be for the most part it should be a three foot of water and less with fish constantly coming to the bank in years past you know the way it should have been talk about a little bit what we got to see last week and coming into this tournament so many anglers said that are in our field said even though it should be a sight fishing tournament, forward facing sonar also is going to be a player on this lake. Yeah, it, it definitely is. You know, I started out last week, the first segment I did with you guys in the Kissimmee River, looking at mega live forward facing sonar. And it turns out there was one guy doing that in the river and, and won the tournament with Tyler Rivette. So very uh, unusual for Lake Okeechobee. First time I can ever remember seeing that happen there on that lake. But everyone expect, expects it to happen some here. And I was just showing here on, on my, my hummingbird unit right now, I'm in the Spring Creek area and there's not as many fishermen here as I thought there would be. But but what's really incredible, Z, is, is the fact that so many years ago when I came here, we didn't have this technology, and it took me so long to learn Spring Creek. And you see now with my mapping, my 2D sonar, uh, my down imaging, and my side imaging, you can idle along on these contour lines, look for these bare places, the open places where there is no vegetation. That's where a lot of these guys are looking for, and catch these fish. That's why I think we'll see a lot of that. The technology has changed, and it, it, it makes it where anglers who have never been to Lake Seminole can come out here with two and a half days of practice and find these places. It, it took anglers like me 20 years ago, it took you six months to find the things that they can find in one day. Davey, every time that the Bass Masters has come to Lake Seminole and other professional tournaments, it always seems like that confluence where really where the Hooch, Spring Creek, and the Flint River come together, that kind of lower region of the lake is always a main player. Why do you think that is tournament after tournament every time we've been here? You're exactly right, Zay, and I don't know the answer for sure. I've thought about that a lot. I think maybe it's just where the different water colors, water clarity, different types of vegetation seem to be right there. 
Um, you know, you have the Chattahoochee will be a different color sometimes than, than the Flint, oftentimes. And then it's just like you have the, the Spring Creek influence where you have all this clear water. And, and I just think it's where those fish, and in particular the bait fish, love to, to live their lives, really. And I, I think that's why you see so many of our catches from, let's say, from Wingetts down to the dam and then up the hooch just a little ways, like you mentioned. Davey, last week we fished a place that was 10 times, or more than 10 times, the size of this place yet because of the conditions we had guys fishing on top of each other. The, the, the crowds really affected the outcome of that tournament here, and, and, uh, but here I seem to get the idea that they're not going to be fishing on top of one another, although John Cox said he thought he would see some of that today. What do you think about that, uh, that particular aspect? Yeah, Tommy, that's a great question. I think we will see the anglers spread out more than we did last week, but I did talk to John Cox this morning also, and he thought that there's only a, a limited number of areas where the water's clear enough, Ronnie spoke of this yesterday, that, that you will see the guys that want to sight fish you know, in, in about three or four areas on the Flint and down here on the lower end of, of Lake Seminole. But, you know, this is a big fishery also. And the one thing I like about it, it has so much diversity. you here in Spring Creek, obviously, to stand in timber, but then there's also a lot of areas where guys can sight fish here around Spring Creek. But then you've got the river ledges. It reminds me a lot of Tennessee River. You, you've got so many things going on, so much hydrillo. Guys will fish offshore, maybe not on the river ledge, but on the shallower area. So it's going to be a great tournament for a lot of Reasons, but one of the things I'm most excited about is we'll see, you know, so many different techniques and, and approaches from these anglers. Well, that's great news, Davey Height. We always look forward to everybody doing something different at a tournament. That's what makes it really entertaining. The great Davey Height out there with his new tool is his is Megalon. He's even more powerful oh, yeah. now. Yes, he is a powerful man. <laughs> Going to get over to Kyle Welcher here. And interesting, Tommy, Kyle Welcher fishing around a lot of the leaders in this tournament, right? It get to the same vicinity. Uh, good bite right there for Kyle Welcher. I hope you got that on video. That sucker came out there and got it. Braid, 7.6 rod. I'll take me some of that right there. My old rapid scale out, see what's going on with him. Probably another two and a half. It's like a two five. It was a good bite right there for Kyle Welcher. And about a half dozen boats in that little pocket, a pocket that we have seen before. Pass Master Live. Kyle off to a good start this year. It's crazy how the first few years of his career he could do no wrong. Top 10, top 15 in points, always making that cuts. One. And then you just have what? one bad season. Dang. Mm. That was the biggest one yet. Mm. Three and a half right there. Another thing to watch and got to hear a little bit of it with uh, Scott Canterbury, who did a interview with Shea Baker. Really kind of keep your eye on a, a lot of the mixes of grasses. You get in some of these little shallow pockets and see a, lot, a little bit of that bank grass. That's something big that we see this time of year. Saw that in a tournament on Pickwick years back, but really what look for wherever you start to get a mixture of grass, a mixture of milfoil and hydrilla and pad stems, just really good habitat, good spawning bays. Oh, man. Don't do that no more. See, I ain't hooked one good yet, except that frogfish. Mm. 
two and three quarter. Kyle Welcher, good little flurry right there on his way to loading the boat early on on this day one action here at Lake Seminole. Right the two guys will be watching all day long, Drew Benton and this man, Drew Cook. Drew Cook said the majority of his time this morning, lipless and a bladed jig. Trying to see him move around a little bit more now. Jack swim jig. We might have some fun doing that stuff today. Got to see him working that swim jig a lot last week on Okeechobee. Kind of went away from him by Championship Sunday. comment with the way it has warmed up that that swim jig could end up being a bigger player than he got to see early in the week as far as his lipless crankbaits he was quoted earlier in the week saying he put out an APB told all his friends to give him all their lipless crankbaits because he knows he's <laughs> going to be going through giant numbers of them and he's not going to go into the middle of a bunch of fish and pick one off a stump he's yeah. just going to break it off yeah. Not with $100,000 on the line, he said anyway. <laughs> Told you I'd be able to throw to that sandy spot with the quarantine crawl, catch one. Old big bite quarantine crow. Two and three quarter. It's amazing, Z, you know this, how many bass just in a, in a one foot drop off of depth ditch that goes into a bay or a sand spot, how many at Seminole can hold just with this time of the year? Small, small areas, no doubt. And, and you know, the real, literally the other thing about it is. There's another one. He is getting bit. <laughs> it's like Kyle Welcher just had three or four bites in the same spot. And that's the difference here is a lot of those males that you see better. being caught bigger males here than you see on Lake Okeechobee that we witnessed last week. Guys catching eight pounders, then backing it up with the 10 incher. If you weren't quite sure what the hype was all about with Drew Cook and Drew Benton when it comes to Lake Seminole, we're finding it out this morning how many bites these guys are getting and the rolling one good event into another good event. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge. And I'm going to go ahead and get some fantasy transparency out of the way early in this event. There are some times where you need to go with chalk and there's some times where you can go off the beaten path. This one this week, you needed to go with some of the names that we know are going to probably factor here this week. And so for my uh, Mercury drain the lake. I wanted to drop a couple of the big names off. I did not 
set this team because I was so poor at Okeechobee. This was all set before the season like Tommy, Such, and myself do. We set our whole season out ahead of time. But I thought Drew Cook, just with his local knowledge here, Buddy Gross with his ability to fish offshore grass, guys like Brandon Lester and Greg Hackney, this time of the year just show up big in these events. Brian New offshore, Cole Sands offshore, and then some of these guys who are from Texas or live in Texas that know how to fish offshore with bigger baits or around a good, when you're around a population of fish, how to get the bigger one to bite in Chris Zaldane and Ray Hanselman. Wasn't super excited to see the visuals this morning of Ray, but I'm glad to see he's back fishing and everything's all right there. But there's the eight guys that I decided to burn this week. And then with my Rapala Fantasy Fishing, my, my five angler lineup, I kind of had a mixture. I didn't want to commit extremely to the guys that maybe would sight fish or fish shallow grass. And I didn't want to commit just to the pre -spawn on guys that were fishing offshore. So I have a little bit of a mix. I've got Patrick Walters in bucket A, Buddy Gross in bucket B, both guys who expect to be offshore a little bit in this event for sure. They do have the ability to go up and sight fish as well. And then we had the local knowledge, like I mentioned with Drew Benton in bucket D, you're never gonna get Drew Benton in bucket D again. He's gonna, he's never gonna finish as low as he was at Okeechobee. He's gonna be out of that bucket in higher percentages the rest of the year. I had to use him here. Corey Johnston, you're never gonna see him in bucket E ever again. So I wanted to to get him out of the way and get him in bucket E when I could. And Luke Palmer, just steady Eddie, a guy who we don't talk about a bunch on the Bassmaster Lead Series, but he has the makings consistency wise and ability, especially in the Southeast, to really have a good first six or seven events of the season. So Luke Palmer, he's in bucket C, had a middle of the road finish at Okeechobee. I'd expect greater things from him here as we go to Murray, Santee Cooper, and I'd watch out for him honestly in Tennessee for the classic. He's shown up in the big moments the last few years, Tommy. Thank you, Ronnie. You really did chalk up on that drain the lake this week. I, hey, <laughs> I brought out the big guns, and that's, that's you know. <laughs> all right. I decided to use them here. That's might as well. No time Indeed. like the present. Yeah, we've got an interesting tournament going on here. A lot of familiar names from last week on our leaderboard. In fact, four of the top ten on our leaderboard were in the top wow. ten when they finished last week. Brandon Cobb, Clark Wentland, uh, Carl Jockamson, and Drew Cook. So momentum and fish in this part of the country are playing big time so far. We're just getting started, getting out of the first hour and a half of fishing here. The Gamakatsu Bass Master Elite at Lake Seminole. We'll take ourselves a quick break and we will be right back with day two action for you live. Yeah! A water! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. So great to have you with us here on Bassmaster Live, still in the second hour of fishing on the first day of competition at this Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite Lake Seminole, legendary Lake Seminole. This is the second stop of the year. We were at Lake Okeechobee, Mark Zona, last week in a, uh, a tournament that turned us in so many different directions yes. we weren't expecting. But it was, it was one that's you good. didn't want to miss, that's for sure. No yeah. doubt about it, Tommy, and really, Watching that entire tournament with Tyler Rivette doing something totally different off the beaten path in the Kissimmee River, working that Berkeley Stunner jerk bait. And I, it's strange looking back on that tournament. I think it was so huge on Championship Sunday for that first bite, that first big one that Tyler Rivette caught just to calm him down for the rest of the day. And here's the biggest problem Tyler Rivette said he has had since that victory. Get ready. He said, man, I've just had so many phone calls and interviews throughout practice this week. I said, Tyler, that is a darn good problem to have, <laughs> my friend. But uh, first victory for the young angler from Louisiana. Big, big week. And I've it, Mercer nailed it. It was the gun show oh, all yes. day, every single day for young Tyler Rivette. <laughs> he came armed and ready, so to speak. That's Tom, for sure. Tommy, you and I talked about this as we look at his weights throughout the week as he got – Set off to such a good start day one and day two and then survived day three when the conditions so, changed and then day four had the biggest bag of the final day to, to be able to finish uh, with 86-15. Ronnie, r r quick question looking at Tyler Rivette. I think he ripped his, when he won, I think he ripped his jersey off. He ripped Not it. Uh, Hulk that. Hogan, yeah. Yeah. Macho Man, Randy Savage. Style. Do you, is there a prayer at the Classic if you have a big first day in fantasy that you would do that on the set? Ever? Yeah, oh. I can do that because Ronnie? I have buttons and they'll pop, is so I can rebutton it. I, I won't rip it, but oh, Tom, oh, what, yeah. what yeah. we talked about, Tommy, was that we mentioned Drew Cook, Patrick Walters, Jake Whitaker as the likes of the college representatives because they've won awards. Yeah, I think we can now add Tyler Rivette to that bunch when we broadcast. Yeah. 
the college trail now that he's got an elite trophy. Not wide to Tyler, was that, was that right now? Oh, big and big male. <laughs> it's a start. Hopefully the female's there. Oh, number one. Solid keeper said that was one of the big problems here on Seminole, having to go through a lot of males, Tommy. Mm. Said you go through a lot of fish that size and then bow up on a big one. You're right, Ronnie. He's, he's one of those college guys. He founded his bass club, his sure. team at Nickel State University. 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Fished eight years. <laughs> they're, they're at the school, so that's, a, that's we, amazing. You see, a li you see quite a bit of that in college yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. Afraid of the yeah. workforce. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, hook that you bleed. Well, fat girl. She looked big when she was coming up on that speed worm. Damn, I wish I had this area to myself. He's about to catch one over there. Two and a half. Thank you. They all, nothing could be smaller than this one for sure. That's the bad part. I feel like they're gonna wreck them. Canelli just got rid of his two pounder with a three plus. He's over 20 pounds. He's leading still. Bob Downey, his fourth fish, his third four pound plus. He's up to 14 and a half pounds, second place. And one thing you are definitely <laughs> seeing this morning, frighteningly similar actually to Okeechobee. John Cox nailed it. You are seeing little pods of boats. Tyler Rivette fishing around a pretty good, big group. Bob Downey, oh. Bob Downey mm -hmm. fishing around a lot of competitors and Iconelli counting eight boats around Iconelli right wow. now. It's easy to do it at the house when you ain't got much on the line, you know, you could just sit there all day and do it. And here it's like a lot on the line. Should make for some interesting day two morning fodder with Iconelli tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Give us some more, please. Yeah, Ike won here the Georgia Bassmaster Tour That's event. Real big one. Hey, wow. 2002. I know Ike will be pleased that he has a cam he could have a camera in the boat tomorrow because of his performance not because we decided to put one on day 1 with him i know last year it was a little bit of a shock got him Clark. Back. how good he fished to qualify and make it mm -hmm. back to the elites and then have just a, such a poor season last year it was kind of the two i just caught that's it but he's got his irons and a lot of fire z and you know the focus at times it's hard to keep it all you know get oh, out. Yeah. on the up and up a lot like scott martin outside of the tournaments as a a lot of commitments. It's pretty cool, like just thinking like last week how like Clark was in second, like and Steve Kennedy, Kyle, like like I watched all those guys, you know, growing up. <laughs> and to beat them, that's pretty cool. 
That is pretty cool, I'd say. Find this interesting, Tommy John Cox told us, and we know he is nimble and agile like a mongoose. Like he a told cat, us the yeah. last time, yeah. exactly, a lynx. <laughs> if uh, the last time we were here, he stepped on his net and broke his, shattered his ankle. What? And did I not get that. it checked out for several days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who was this? John Cox. He's a busy his guy. His cameraman. Too. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if, you, if his cameraman asks him about it, it is a heck of a story. He's a busy guy as well. Was busy last year. Top tens at Harris Chain, St. John, Santee, Pickwick. That's why he was at Pickwick was the closest he was, you know, the second half of the season for AOI. And after that, the smallmouth swing kind of got him. Mm -hmm. Interesting note. Yeah, suckers everywhere. John Cox third at Knoxville, Tennessee in our elite event there in 2021. Wow, that's right. Yeah. Little yeah. backwater area, shallow crank it. I remember that. I mean, that yeah. was a suckers who's who for top tens catfish. as well with Gussie Cox, Kennedy, Christie, Hackney, like Brandon Card. It Jake was, Whitaker got in on that yeah, a little bit too. He was the yeah. teleco. Yeah. teleco Is there any way, Z, that in the next event for the Classic that we see someone even bring in 15 smallmouth? Keep People keep saying that that's a deal. Like, it's just, I could see it when we had the Elite earlier in the year, but late March, I just, I didn't yeah. see it. I don't see it happening. I'm going to have to mix in some largemouth in that tournament. That is, should be the most prime time of the year, really, to be there for. So you should be solid numbers in that tournament. You know, that the tournament that Gussie won, it was it was kind of grimy for the largemouth fishermen just because it was so early and so cold. It's crazy they got needlefish in here. That's a saltwater fish. Yeah. We got them down by us. It's all saltwater, you know. I guess they could migrate up the Apalachicola. We flip it Tommy? The right, yeah. Get, this get, lake is the termination of the Chattahoochee, but it becomes the Apalachicola yeah. yeah. south of the dam. Yeah. This one looks a little shallow. Little fish. It didn't look like the water on one side of the lock was tremendously different no. than the other. Normally, it's a big drop. It looked like it wasn't wasn't too big of a fluctuation. over here earlier. I see you. Brian knew a lot of a lot of experience here. A lot of top finishes said it was the worst practice he has ever had on Lake Seminole. I think that's just some perch or something. Some needlefish. John Sokup just tied Ike for the big fish of the day. A six pounder, six zero. They entered. Wow. This is sole fish right now. And I want it.
Both Johnsons have made it into the top 10 right now. Well, again, we remind you, man above oh, 20 yeah. pounds, one man up there, that's Mike Iaconelli. Oh, yeah. Prepared hard for this season opening in Florida, Ooh. Georgia. Yeah. Now you got to call it out right here on your VMC on point. Iaconelli landing on them. One of the anglers, I hate to, I feel like I can pick on Iaconelli a little bit. Iaconelli does tend to big eye him a little bit, so he may only have 13 to 14 pounds. No, what? I don't know who's that. No, that no. was terrible. Uh. Your VMC on point, Iaconelli unofficially with 20 pounds and four ounces, and he made the comment before this season began, he was not going to tail off like he did last year cashing a check at Okeechobee, starting off great here on Seminole, your VMC on point, Mike Iaconelli. Mike Iaconelli is still, it's hard to not think of him as still a young upstart, but he's got two decades out here with the Bassmasters, and what a set of accolades. My first classic's a highlight for me. It, it's a tournament that actually changed my life. Angler of the Year was a big one. But I'm going to end it with one, I think, probably my most special, which is a win at home, which came um, an elite series on the Delaware River in Philadelphia. It was a place that I started fishing as a kid, literally off the banks of the river fishing for catfish when I was six or seven years old. And in the same exact place, all these years later, I got to win an, an elite event in front of my family and friends and club fishermen and, and peers from home. And um, the energy of that crowd, the energy of, of hoisting up that trophy over your head, that blue trophy in, in Philadelphia, I'll never forget that. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think anything could ever get any better than that. Coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Already rolling into the third hour of fishing here on day one, Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole. It goes by very fast. We have mm -hmm. 104 anglers out there today, gunning for 50 spots that will move on after tomorrow's weigh in into the weekend. We got our leaderboard right there, unofficial. Couple of veterans book in that leaderboard. Mike Iaconelli on top, Clark Winlet in 10th place. And lots of movement up into there, including both of the Johnston brothers. Bryant Smith, the rookie, is in there as well. And with another rookie, Will Davis, for a little bit, uh, Logan Latuso was in our top 10. He's just bubbling under that right now. So very interesting cast of players here. As Davey Height promised us, we're gonna get to see a lot of different approaches. Be interesting to sort of see how that the success of each approach filters out today. Gets us more prepared for four days of fishing here. Mm-hmm. TH Marine Weather Watch, look at that, the weather. Man, been in the 80s all week. Low 67 tonight. Boy, that's just, that's begging for it there, Z. Yeah, and you really, you could not ask for a better TH Marine Weather Watch today. Gonna get up to mid 80s to pretty much all through the weekend. The great thing again, Said it at the top of our broadcast here on Bassmaster Live. Looking at the weather going into the weekend, winds are finally going to subside a little bit. Only 5 to 10 mile per hour winds Saturday and Championship Sunday. Beautiful this week on Seminole. A lot of wind in the practice, as you mentioned, Arizona. <laughs> A little bonus coverage worked up for you here during the break. And we, I believe we're going to get out to a rookie way up in there. Two events in a row. Two it's events in a bad. row. Will Davis, we got to yes. talk to him uh, on some bonus coverage last week. Will, good to be with you again. Th things seem to be going good so far in 2023. Tell us about today. Uh, I appreciate you having me back on. It's, uh, it's kind of tough, to be honest with you. You know, yesterday I had a good day. And I just uh, think you can't get going. So they're in, a, they're in a weird mood right now. They're trying to spawn and pull up. Some's leaving, but the majority of them's coming. So it's been one of them uh, grind of a week, as you say. I was uh, That's the first two days of practice, man. I was 
I was very uh, disappointed, to be honest, to be honest with you. Will, looking at your tournament that you had on Lake Okeechobee, it was one of those tournaments you kind of just got in an area and grinded it out the entire event. Is it a similar situation here on Seminole? And with that being said, how much history do you have on this lake? The second time I've ever been here, which I came in pre practice to just run around trying not to tear my lower unit off. And I put in a, a very big gym. I went out through there and I was like, oh my gosh. So without being said, it's not the general area that I'm, or more specific place I'm fishing right now. It's just a uh, running gun in type style, which is I like to do. Have you got a, a, a good extended plan or are you just taking each day, each hour uh, with what the lake presents to you? Have you got a long-term plan for this tournament? No, just kind of taking it day by day right now. Really hour by hour, you know. Pull up in an area, that's what's so good about this place. Up in a place and uh, get 25 pounds, you know. But I have not found that way. But it, it's, it's going to happen. The guys are going to catch us. Will, congratulations on a great start to your Bassmaster Elite Series career. Great talking to you. I know we'll be seeing you at the weigh-in, as we will all of our 104, coming up at 3.30 local time, Eastern time today. Fifth year now, it seems like Tyler Yvette just got out here, but he's a fifth-year man. Got himself a victory now. Big show he put on last, last week. Got her. Big one. I think it's a grunnel. No? What is that? That's a bass. No? Yeah. <laughs> Big old mouth on it. It looked like a shoe pick. I sound like all the mother guy. Bacon, oh my gosh, bacon. Slap me every time I say that. <laughs> when I set the hook, she went the other way. Two, two and a half. Number three. Nice. Now I gotta change this hook out. Is that two and a half? Yeah. Mark Zona, you see the issue of ripping and tearing your jersey like Hulk Hogan, and you only have yeah. one short sleeve ripping and a jersey. tearing, a ripping and yeah. a tearing. <laughs> well, no, when, it's not. When you Go only ahead. have one short sleeve jersey and one long sleeve jersey, you now have to fish with a long sleeve jersey all second event until you can get more jerseys in the mail. So, yeah. something you have to deal and with when you're that strong. You could tell Mercer was in heaven, gun showing and. Oh. Just throwing fuel on that fire with that uh, <laughs> championship Sunday. It on. Yeah. As he should. We're talking. Tommy, are you a little surprised? Any... Are a little, little surprised that it took two, Still, two and a half uh, hours to see our first 20 pound bag today? I am a little bit. Are you really? Yeah, you thought it'd be yeah. like right out of the box, huh? Okay. I thought we'd see, uh, you know, we talked about it yesterday and we. With the two Drews, Drew Cook, Drew Benton, I really thought one of them was going to get on one of those big ones. That's why. Main Lake bars, Main River bars, and light them up. And we have already seen they have pointed their nose to the bank, both Cook and Benton, bailing on that Main River hard spot areas that they were concentrating on in practice. I think I just watching Drew Benton, I think he was sort of stunned. Yeah, he to was. land on that spot. Yeah, I really think he was surprised that those fish have bailed. I'm sure he'll check it multiple times. You're right. Drew Cook said, uh, you know, 
anybody could land on a ditch that's just full of them and load it up with 20 pounds in just minutes time. So maybe some of our anglers we're, we're not in contact with have had an experience like that. All will be known the further we get into this day. There's our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year list, which is the exact same as our final st stats from Lake Okeechobee. Tyler Rivette on top, the veteran and former AOY, Clark Winland in second place there. Cobb, Latuso. No one can lead that tournament for two days in a row. That was a that was a hard one. <laughs> yes. And real quick, cracking uh, cracking on Iconelli a little bit. Uh, I did get a text from a Becky Iconelli that I thought was going to tune me up uh -huh. here on the first day of this tournament. She actually agreed. 100 <laughs> percent that he's only got he's 13 closer pounds. to 13 than 20. Yes. <laughs> Tyler Event hooked up again. Wow. Big one. He's 12. A little fatty. A little fatty, you. Tyler gets a weight on this. I'll say, Tommy, I was wrong. I told everybody last week that if you finish 101 to 104, you don't get any points. But it looks like we have adjusted our point mm. scale where first is 104 points. And as long as you weigh a fish in tournament competition, you get a point okay. at minimum, which said to run that could be out key for here. the guys. Come in on me, on my spots. Three points here, two points there, rather Kicked than zero. Kick him out. He gone. Sure hate to be down there, though, Rennie. Yeah. <laughs> Probably where I would be. Just kidding. I'd never do that to old Hankster. Meant a, meant a lot to me that him and Brock and stayed down there and waited for weigh-in to be done. Cause I mean, we literally came straight to another tournament, so. They could have easily left and been on their way, not driving all night. That scared me. Come on, bitch. Well, Brian knew definitely, definitely shot us straight. He said his mm -hmm. practice was miserable at best another thing brian knew said he will not you know you get in that fish pond drain area where a lot of these fish really kind of tend to pull up first and spawn we talked about that the last tournament that we covered here a lot of those pond fish and canal fish that are resident fish will lock on first he said he will not get in the mix with a circus of boats he said he was going to be very very main river, main lake oriented here at Lake Seminole, which is what he's done in years past to have success. Tough start this year, but 15th and angler of the year last year had top tens at well, places like Lake Fork, Oahe, lacrosse to end his season. Looks like John Cox keyed up on one as well. Start to see more and more of that as those males make the move. The females should follow to the shallows. And about two thirds of our field have registered fish on bass track. We probably go about 15, 17 that have not reported at all. And there are 16 anglers without marshals today. So we have almost a full field. We have well over 85. Let's see a lot of posts from We're anglers really catching big on, ones this week. and. Seeing way too many males being caught today for 
a collision not to happen. It's just it's mm. it could not so ask for better conditions. Early. At least get started. I ain't worried just yet. Got to speak with our old friend, Mark Zona, J. Todd Tucker, who lives in this general region as Fish Lake Seminole and was considered, you know, for the Elite Series, this would be his home lake. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned there's going to be a lot of focus on the Flint River and Spring Creek, but those who make the trek, you know, an extra 10 to 15 minutes or whatever it might be to the Chattahoochee, that if they get in that Delta region that they consider it, you know, going from the mouth of where the Chattahoochee hits spring in that region all up to, you know, Fairchilds and places like that, that Delta region could get good if those fish move into spawn because it's all of those small, you know, isolated islands or reed heads and little backwaters and things like that. Yes, it's going to take more time idling into places and idling out of places, but those regions, if they make a push, you could see an angler pop up maybe in our top 10 periodically throughout the day when they get those flurries. We've got about yeah, seen a few 10, maybe six to 10 up there. Yep, seen a few boats up in there. Only one of the anglers registering in our top 20 right now in the hooch. Yes. I think Jonathan Kelly's in the spring. He just landed a 4-3, jumped up to fourth place. And Fujita caught a five-pounder. And for those folks who are wondering about boat ramps and places that maybe get replenished, there's two really like main boat ramps for big tournaments. That would be the Boat Basin in Bainbridge that repopulates the Flint River with fish at times, but then also big gyms in uh, in Spring Creek there, we'll have a lot of tournaments that, that kind of repopulate fish in that region, which is, they're great fishing areas in general, but that also is a reason why at times that you know, it's right. hot spots to be. Drew Cook mentioned that, that uh, I would imagine tournaments should spread out their release fish, release them further down lake. Taking a look at Drew Cook, that is, Tommy, that is right outside of an area you and I covered, David Walker. I remember in a going back, we went all the, the way back into that corner. Yes. Yes, we did. Beautiful day. Yep, turned really clear. We actually watched Aaron Martins catch a six to seven pounder on that exact flat where you see Drew Cook, a lot of grass there and great memories. Great, great Absolutely. memories right there. Big tournaments here for a long, long time in the history of bass fishing. In fact, the third tournament that Ray Scott organized early, pre-BASS days, was held right here. And of course, uh, Jack Wingate operated the Lunker Lodge at that time. It was a big, uh, big help to Ray finding anglers for it. This was a great place to find anglers. Obviously, it's a good place to find fish as well. We'll be right back. The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Day one action from here at the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole. Morning is rushing by here, getting closer and closer to midday, and we got a veteran of bass fishing, a veteran of Lake Seminole, former winner here, big time. Mike Iaconelli, back 20 years ago, won a big Bassmaster Tour event here, and he is on top of that leaderboard now, somewhere north of 20 pounds, we have estimated by Bass Track. We've also got Will Davis, the rookie, having a second good tournament in a row. Drew Cook, one of the favorites here, along with this man, Drew Benton. He's got one win on his resume, and that happened back in 2018 down in Texas at uh, Texas Fest on Lake Travis, Drew Benton. Exactly, Tommy. Okay. And then that was one of those strange tournaments. I, look, Drew Benton is a very, obviously, very versatile angler in the Bassmaster Elite Series. That was one of those lakes you might not have 
picked him on no. well, yeah. Ronnie Moore's drain the lake situation Whoa, now. That game thing. But it was a big victory right there for Drew Benton. <laughs> Going to get out of the water right now. Local angler Drew Benton, who definitely has moved from where we saw him earlier this morning off the Flint River. That's the buck. He swallowed it. Good look at how big those males are. I almost hate to And man, you could that right there that shot right there you could get a really really great visual of how clear and clean that water is in spring creek compared to the anglers that are in the hooch or the flint this is a place that you don't necessarily want chocolate milk z but dirty or stained water here is much different than okeechobee these fish yes. don't mind it they live in it they can yep. fish and they bite in it it doesn't just shut down areas completely talked about that actually on the uh, pre-show yesterday with you guys these mm -hmm. fish are very used to that dirtier water and boy you talked to drew cook and benton there was a lot of color in this lake a couple weeks ago what you're seeing drew benton do right here he said he did not want to be doing this on days one and two wanted to save a lot of his spawning fish for later in the tournament but main river clear spot little hard spot not playing this morning yeah, he said the fish had blown past that on up toward the bank so yeah a little late for that one said he does have four or five good ones locked on beds good ones as in four to five pounders John Cox, obviously, eyeballing one of them. It'd be over if I had a freaking landed her the first time she bit. I don't get it. Problem is, you can't see, you can't tell if it's even up there anymore. I mean, I feel like it is, it's just not biting. Carl Jacobson with his second nice fish. He's got a five and a half and a four row. Tenth place, time, two baby. fish. gets our day turned around. We're heading in the right direction now. <laughs> we'll give her her own side. Well, let's see this tray. So that's a fair trade. Now we roll. Five pound call. Mm. Minimum four for Drew Benton. 
I just gotta keep telling myself that. Actually, I'm gonna check a couple right here before we get ahead of ourselves. Benton catching the Ooh. mail. Awesome. Then backing it up with that female. Said he couldn't see that fish. That's right. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can make it. Oh, we good now. <laughs> we good. I mean, it means a lot for the tournament, but I'm gonna tell you, this whole thing's a mind game. And it did a bunch for that. You can call it that. Five pound cull Z will put them neck and neck with I Drew Cooker just seven, ahead of them. But... Cooked up again. You are watching it go down right now, at least here for day number one. Talked about what is the advantages that a Drew Benton or a Drew Cook has. And obviously their starting areas not playing in a big way, knowing these little areas, these little flats, pockets where they can pull into, catch one good one and roll on. And that is going to be a huge advantage. Also being able to navigate full speed where they don't have to idle mm -hmm. and eat a lot of time. You are watching it play out right now where that advantage squarely lies with Drew Benton, Drew Cook. Oh. Huh. Oh, yep. no. Well, I'm going to tell you, when he set the hook on it, Tommy Sanders, mm. you knew it was going to be a contender for the power pole replay of the day. Catches the mail. Said this one bit right before he caught the mail. Said he could have been on his way about five minutes after he caught that two and three quarter pound mail, landing this seminal stud all we'll give her her bowed outside. up outside of Bainbridge, Georgia. Drew Bent, you are easily the power pole replay of day number one so far. Look at that. Look at him staring down his camera, man. Uh, swagger. <laughs> a little bit of swagger. You know, sometimes you have to reach into the cookie jar a little earlier than you thought you would, but. Ooh, that's right. And you know, it's. Uh, yeah. It's I got nice some to big get things mail. on track. But I'd like to say you do not Chunk. Mm. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, and he's the whole tournament outcome is uh oh, they're leaving me to uh oh, I found where a couple went. Oh, you know, they're favorites for a reason here. You yes. Know, some some day some places you just don't want to avoid the favorites just because they're favorites. Sometimes it's and Ronnie, it's a genuine Ronnie, thing. he is not he is not where we tape the Zona show, but he is not far from that little stretch. <laughs> big, big flat backwater. Obviously, Drew Benton up the leaderboard in about 10 minutes right there. I know a lot of people, fantasy-wise, were going way back in history to pick Mike Iaconelli. They're getting rewarded or feeling good about it right now. Such raises his hand. One of those folks, Drew Benton now moving up into second place, and Drew Cook right, right one spot behind fourth. 
Jonathan Kelly, Will, da Will Davis, Strasner, and all the rest. Things are starting to pop here on Lake Seminole. We'll be yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Lots of anxiousness about coming to Lake Seminole. Really wanting to get back here after almost a decade for the Bassmasters to be here. Bassmaster Elite Series back in 2014. And this is why everyone was looking forward to it. The big ones are here too. Drew Benton, one of the absolute favorites, one of the chalk side. bets, as we say. Putting a six pounder in the boat. That's going to be your Phoenix Bass big boat of the tournament so far. So much fun to watch that. It's going to be fun to figure out what the real potential for big weights is going to be over four days here. Took 97 pounds and 10 ounces to win back uh, almost almost a decade ago. Welcome to you. Glad you are with us today. We were here at the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, along with Ronnie Moore and Mike Such Sukon. And Ronnie, uh, you, you've been talking about it. There are little bitty subtleties that we're just figuring out here. Secrets that the, the homers, the hometown fans know. And, and I think Mark Zona hit it perfectly this morning when he, he was surprised someone didn't land on 20 pounds quicker. But we see as these fish are slowly changing from maybe they were in 10 to 12 feet and now they're moving up to five to six feet or they were five to six and they're on the bank now. We're now seeing Drew Benton relocate some of those and we're seeing these guys go from single digit weights to upper teens in a quick hurry. So I, I expect to see by noon we're going to have quite a few 20 pound bags, in my opinion, on the leaderboard. Suchi, yeah. you're on to Iconelli early on. And what, what do you, what do you I got, see? I get him on my drain the lake because he won back here 20 years ago. Right. Fish, fish a little history. But you can see how fast it turned around. Benton had eight pounds before that flurry. He's up to almost 17 pounds. All right, Z, uh, Drew Benton making a perfect move after having his first spot sort of wash out on I mean, him. That's the kind of stuff that wins tournaments. Yeah, and it was one of the moves, Tommy, that Drew Benton did not want to make. He said he wanted to keep those big females that are spawn and locked on until we got into Saturday and possibly Sunday. But if you really look at the move that he made, leaving the Flint quickly, going up in the spring, cleaner water, and starting to burn through a few of those bigger spawners that he found throughout practice. Going to get back on the water right now with last week's champion, Tyler Rivette. It's worth noting there are a lot of locals in these Elite Series events who try to save stuff for the weekend and it not play out, and they never make it to the weekend to be in contention. If you have to burn some stuff now to stay in contention, you might as well. I think you're right there. I ain't hungry. I just ate your worms, huh? Five. Oh, red bass, red eye. I feel like I don't even know what I feel like. I feel like this ain't good. But it's number five. <laughs> yeah, he's twelve. Seven pounds. Pound and a quarter. Number five, correct. That is correct. Boy, slow. Slow morning for Brian New. Brian New you know, and, and, and really looking at what uh, last week was obviously it was top heavy days one and two down on Okeechobee, and we saw the weights kind of taper off. You know, I, I do think it'll be a, a lot, should be a, a more consistent at the top. And we may not see a, a 33 pound bag like we did last week, but I think you're going to see, like Ronnie just said, I think you're going to see 20 pounds throughout this event. Um, and I think your lower end weights, you know, your cut line weights down around 50th place. If you, you can already tell, Tommy, if you catch five solid males this week, they're not going to weigh five that weigh six pounds. We saw that on Okeechobee. Yeah. They're going to weigh 14 to 16 pounds on this lake. Why are these males so much runnier on Okeechobee than they are here? I, I, I can't answer that. I don't. Okay. It's a I curiosity. Don't, but you, you, do, you, you do see a lot of, you know, grass lakes. And Okeechobee used to be one of those lakes, Tommy, back in the you know, FLW days that you and, and Jerry McKinnis covered when there was a lot of eelgrass and hydrilla, the males were bigger then. You know, you saw a lot more two and a half to three pounders than 
this time around, but well, a lot of grass lakes. A lot of this from people finding it, too. You see a bigger average size male. Little guy. I think Ronnie Moore knows that spot right there that Drew Benton's in. <laughs> but they're choking that thing. That's a dirty jigs with a little big bite swimmer on the back of it, finesse swimmer. I remember it, Z, because you said you're not allowed to cast here. You only can take photos. Put that camera in your hand, boy. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, <laughs> Tommy, I did say that. I oh, really did. Too close. I won't get up there. Well, you got to have boundaries. <laughs> you got to have limits. That's the way you raise a kid Just, up properly, right? <laughs> you can really, really see the water quality where Benton's at. Lot cleaner, pad fields, eel grass mixed with hydrilla. And, a lot of those flats, those spawning pockets got, you know, just gray little depressions, clear areas. Made a nice run at Mike Iaconelli, but I just called with his third four pounder. He's over 21 pounds. Johnny, Johnny, you Cox said during the break, working. Ike's got to burn that place down today. Yeah, right? looking at the how many people are around there, I don't know how yes, big of a spot yes, it is or the yes. population, but I I think Ike is when he when you roll up to an area and you start to get to towards 20 pounds and you see five six guys around you catching them as well, it's 25 today yeah. or bust. Like you just you better burn it down. Yeah. And I, saw I feel a blog like come in, Ronnie, that the, it was like a, a lump of grass about the size of a boat, and he's taking it from all angles. He may not still be there. Yeah, and that that's just. Z, you could speak to this. It's probably just a wave of fish maybe rolled into there and occupies a, a small patch of grass, and it, you don't know how many could be there, so you need to just do it from every angle until you till you fish it out. I think that's the one thing that amazed me when we got to spend time on this lake. And granted, it was you know way way more pre-spawn. But what was really interesting to me is how many big ones, really quality fish from three and a half to seven pounds get in such condensed areas on this lake you know one literally one cast spots where if you miss it by five feet you're just not going to get a bite that was the and 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 watching iconelli at least his track so far today it seems like he is on one of those gigs and on that same shoot z two great anglers throwing in a small ditch and the difference in what bait they're throwing on who's catching them. It could be the rattles of your bait. It could be the type of trailer you have on the back of a bladed jig. It could be a slight, you know, color of the blade or whatever yes. it could be. And, and that guy's got zero and you've got 20. And just how honed yep. in they do get in those ditches or those flats. John Cox has been working this fish for quite a while. We, I was gonna say we didn't put the clock on him, but it's, <laughs> Is he reached the point where he's now he's got to stay there? He was beat out by another one an hour ago that we saw him working on yeah. for a bit that he does not have in the live well. And Ronnie, you're right about that, about Iconelli having to burn that down today. He is and has been surrounded by other competitors. And when I mean surrounded, there are boats that have watched the show he's put on today. Tommy, that is a <laughs> bed right there for Drew Benton that slightly sticks out a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's almost obvious. Shoot. God, she was getting ready to eat it. I caught the mail. had to swallow it. <sighs> well, maybe she'll still bite him. Hook. I was thinking about just chunking her back, but I don't know, that might have been what, maybe that's why she wasn't eating it.
Z, where it may take some guys how close it was to catching her was over half a day or that, an entire day of realizing pitch, if he knew wouldn't have got it. Something went away and they need to change. Benton already using up sight fish. I mean, he he got that inclination in, in 30 minutes that he needed to probably do something different today. Yeah. Instead of dying. You know, and, and he, on day one. Yeah, and and he, and he he talked about that Ronnie yesterday. He made you know he he said hooked up right here, Benton. He said he should be able to know in 10 minutes if they're on that hard spot in the flint. You have that vibe, though. He will keep that spot honest every day of this tournament, at least to start on. Because he, he, he said Monday, no joke, he said it was one of the best schools of bass, of big bass, that he has ever found on this lake. All Gerald Swindle's fish just came in on bass track. He's in fourth place with about 13 and a half. Just, just coming in. Okay. All five came in at once. Yeah. Okay. And that means he does, Swindle does not have a marshal, so that means Swindle probably got a limit and input them himself. Like, here's my five fish. Here's I just, my break to put in. Yeah, he's got yeah. four pounders, biggest. Appreciate the anglers who do take the time to do that. Helps paint the picture a little better for us from afar. I think four is going back. Yep. Four is going back. I got three right there. And I got two nice ones on that side. Making moves, making decisions. And there mm -hmm. it is. I think it's going to be. And really, really looking at that Mercury move of the day, Tommy, was him moving. <laughs> Literally yeah. moving from his starting spot. Caught a little bass early this morning out on that main river in the Flint River, that little hard spot. Valen getting into Spring Creek and getting it done. Anchored by a six pounder that he caught just before 10 a.m unofficially have him at 16 pounds and 14 ounces gonna say maybe a little bit more mercury move of the day drew benton not a big surprise here on lake seminole z with the weather that we've had when you catch all big females a few days ago and now you roll up and you catch maybe a two pound male and then the one he catches right after this one was even smaller than that What's the, I mean, this is this the next wave of males that pulls up and maybe in a day or two, a wave of female pulls to this depth zone that he's in? Well, I or think- is it a little longer well, than that? You know, I, I just think with the way that this weather is setting up, I think you're gonna see a, a guy like Drew Benton, Andrew Cook, um, actually getting to a certain target weight and then starting to hunt for more on beds to get them. Look, man, it is so hard. We, it doesn't matter where you are. It is so hard to win a sight fishing tournament for four days in a row. But if there are two anglers that could do it on this lake, it would be Drew Cook and Drew Benton. So I think you're going to see a lot of practicing with Drew Benton today. Mercury move of the day anchored by that one right there, Drew Benton. Unofficially six pounds and 14 ounces with that Phoenix boat big bass. Six pounds in there, as you mentioned, Lee. Have him unofficially four and a half pounds behind Mike Iconell. And back to Drew Benton live. Uh, I don't know, <coughs> two and a half. Here's another decent one right here, but I'm gonna leave him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like that's kind of exactly what he's gonna do, Ronnie. <laughs> okay. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. 
Here's that four pound female I saw. I knew she was right in here somewhere. I'm gonna push poles back. See, the good thing about these females, you're not really burning anything catching them today because they might not be here tomorrow. A big male, he'll be here a week. That's the reason why I was saying I don't want to burn them up. Hey, and and really watch wise how he long. sets himself up, what he's doing right here, backing up from that female, getting himself absolutely perfect boat position. You're, you're watching how good he is at this. When you wonder how some of these guys have a one fit, one cast four pounder or something like that Z, it's because they, for one, set up in the right spot and they make the right pitch and then they approach it from the right angle off the rip. So we go over to Drew Cook. Carl Jockamson still catching the right kind. He's got that five and a half, four, he just landed a three. He's in our top 10 with three fish, 12 and a half. It's been cool to watch Benton and Cook, how they've approached, how they've attacked. The first day of this tournament, both starting out in the Flint and then Almost at identical times, both of them heading immediately to Spring Creek. That's all right. For the life of me, Great I still can't figure that out. Above Drew Cook there, just the subtleties of some areas. Drew Benton locked up on a, what he said as a four pound female locked on a bed. Might be too close to these, I don't know. I can't see them. The male was tiny, but the female was at least a four pounder. On Bass Trek, there's a feature on the far right I'm that gives you the updated AOY stand. It's Brandon Cobb. He's seventh in this tournament. You never know what you got when you got a pair up there. They could be up there rubbing, not interested. So Cobb is first, Jacobson is second. Gerald Swindle is third, and Cook is fourth in AY points currently.
Drew Benton again was the rookie of the year when he came out of here in 2016 and his reputation preceded him out here. He was well known as an ace at this technique right here, sight fishing for bedding bass. And we had a chance to visit with Drew Benton about uh, the real subtleties, what really makes this kind of technique work, what he relies on. We had a lot of rain the past couple weeks and every farmer around here has, has been plowing their fields, getting ready to plant for spring, and all that runoff has created a, a stained two arms of the lake. So you've got the Flint River that's pretty stained and the Hooch that's pretty stained. The Hooch is a little bit more clear than the Flint. As much as I love to do it, I would have had to, to not sight fish. Um, but being as the, the conditions that they are, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of both. I'm gonna fish a little bit and sight fish. Um, the problem with the sight fishing, again, if, if, if the water will stabilize, they'll get up there and do like they're supposed to. But the last couple of days, you know, it fell about a half a foot or actually a little over a half a foot. And uh, those fish don't like that. They're up there and they want stable warm water and it's coming back up from what I can tell. So if that happens, it will definitely be a player. Well, that guy's a player here today on day number one, yes. Drew Benton, as expected. Got himself the Phoenix Boats Big Bass of six pounder about, uh, about 45 an hour ago. And he's in second place. Second place to Michael Iconelli. One of the legends of fishing, former classic champion angler of the year, is on top with 21 pounds and four ounces. We'll take a break and be back. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Bassmaster Live still in day one, still in the first half of our day at the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite. Legendary Lake Seminole. A lot of anticipation, a lot of people very anxious to get back here after a long, long interlude. There's your leaderboard right now. One of the legendary anglers in Bassmaster history, Mike Iaconelli. Michael Iaconelli on top with 21 pounds, four ounces. Unofficial weights, of course. And I think we're going to try to dial in some, some bonus coverage here. Some bonus, bonus coverage with Mike Iaconelli. Yes, yes, we are going to get down there. I think we're set up to talk to and Mike, the only, only man to notch uh, a Bass Nation National Championship, a classic championship, an angler of the year. The only man to check those three boxes. I know you're busy today, Michael, we can tell. Give us kind of a picture of what's been going on out there. Yeah, it's a uh, surprise might be the best word. Um, you've probably heard from a lot of guys this week, brutal practice, brutal practice. And it, the kind of practice didn't make sense. You know, water temperature in the 70s, just feeling like it should be wide open. And it wasn't that way for me. Uh, I worked really hard for three days of practice and literally found two areas where I got multiple bites. And that's all I had to go on this morning. Really no idea because of the bad practice what I had. And, you know, what I found here is really it's a textbook staging area, shallow staging area, right? Not deep staging area. And um, I'm going to have you pan out here in a second and look at it. But what this is is... It's the last little deep water comes out from the river channel. And right before it gets to this spawning bay, it touches in two places here. And I'm fishing the one. There's another one over here. We've got another boat fishing. So it's literally the last touch point before you get to the shallow spawning flat. Um, I didn't think it was going to be loaded. It's loaded. Uh, you know, there's a lot and a lot of fish here. They seem like about every 10 or 15 minutes some new ones show up. The other thing is most of these fish are white. And when you catch white fish, you know what's happening. They're coming from the river. Mike, is this an area, is this a spot you feel that you need to burn to the ground today with having other competitors around you? Or is this something you think you can milk for a day or two? You know, I'm burning it, Z. <laughs> I'm burning it to the ground uh, with the kind of practice I had I want to catch everything that's going to bite. Um, I was an early boat this morning, and there was a there was a bit of a shad spawn gone. Tomorrow, I'm a late bite. I'm going to miss, miss that shad spawn completely. I'm burning it. Is the morning the, been the big bite time for you, Mike? Or has it kind of been steady for the first four hours? Well, you know, guys haven't talked about it at all, but there is a shad spawn going on. It's it's 
real narrow window. And, um, you know, that was key for me this morning. A couple of my bigger bites came early. Um, you know, really, I'm still throwing. I'm still whining. But over the next hour here, I have to slow down. And I'm going to be fishing plastics. And they're still here. Every once in a while, I can see one show themselves. And, and there's some great big ones here. Uh, I've got three good ones. I need a couple more big ones. I'm going to burn it to the ground. Mike, you made the comment a couple weeks ago, you and I were doing some content together. You said you are going to catch them this year. How hard was it to come back to the Bassmaster Elite Series and have the season you had last year, which kind of put some fuel in the tank coming into 23? Yeah, it did. I mean, I'm a competitor. Uh, you know, nobody wants to go out and have a miserable season like I did. And when I look back on it, subconsciously, I put a lot of pressure on myself to come back and win an event. It wasn't in the front of my mind, but way in the back of my mind, I wanted to win an event. And that really, I think it messed with me a little bit. This year, I came back calmer, a little more relaxed, and just a little bit more fire to catch him. Make no mistakes about it, man. I left. I came back. These guys are as good or better than they've ever been. These young guys kicked my butt last year. I don't want that to happen. Okay, you talk about the need to burn this place down today. You also talk about that's all you've got here. So you're going to have to make some time later today and go look for something to, to get onto tomorrow and, and beyond that? I'm not. I'm camping here. I'm 90% I'm sure. I can't say 100%, uh, but I'm 90% sure I'm going to camp here the rest of the day. And I've got one other place that sets up exactly like this. Um, now, there could be 20 dudes fishing it. I don't know. There's enough fish moving in and out of here that if I leave, somebody's going to come here and whack them. And I'm, I'm just going to stay. Well, congrats on a great day today, Mike Iconelli. Congrats on a great start to making the cut last week at Lake Okeechobee. So Iconelli on top as we look at his catches throughout the morning. That's the way it's laid out time-wise. Pretty steady. Yeah, absolutely. And Iconelli, the first one to crack that 20 pounds this morning. And you heard him. He's going to burn it to the ground. And more than anything, it's kind of sound that he was going to play defense on that spot mm -hmm. the rest of the day. Got to look at a boat over his shoulder. Iconelli with a great day here on Seminole, just over 21 pounds. Z, even if he's a pound light on every fish, he's still above your 13 or 14 pound threshold for him. Right. So, uh, <laughs> it's been a good day. Get back out to Drew Benton. Of course, him having made a very important, productive move early on on his fishing day, changing the game plan just a little bit has worked out well for him. He's in second. One big one and two okay ones on the big side. <laughs> that skinny skinny one from our first stop all right let's keep on going well, that wasn't no good <laughs> you have some clean fish, yeah all uh, right good job, dude. thank you true benton marching on himself climbing mm -hmm. up there close He's to that 20 pound mark Pulling all the tricks out here, <laughs> sight fishing on day number one. And really, when we come back, I want you to listen just to the little subtle things that you hear Drew Benton say, because you are watching one of the best at it. Drew Benton, 
Starting to chase Iconelli down here on day number one. Great, great stories working all around the lake here. We've been witness to some of it. Drew Benton, of course, we've been with all day and will be with. For the rest of the day, Mike Iaconelli had a chance to visit with him, get his thoughts on what's going on at that very special place he finds himself in this morning. we got more to come from Seminole. Be right back. Yeah! A water! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Burning through the first half of the day here, day number one at the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite. Legendary Lake Seminole, 104 anglers fishing hard for two days. You got to be in the top 50 at the end of it all. We got Mike Iaconelli and Drew Benton get very close to one another pounds wise. In positions one and two, we got Bob Downey from the Midwest. We got Kyoya Fujita from Japan. We got Carl Jockinson from Australia. They come from near and far. And they always do year in and year out to get to this special place, and we are seeing a good, good morning of fishing, which we expect to continue throughout the rest of the day. Had a chance to visit some bonus coverage with Mike Iaconelli. That told us a lot. Yeah, about how he, big, big. Yeah. Big thanks to his super marshal getting us some content there. That was good fantastic. camera stick. Wow, yes. yes. Sounded good, looked good. You're right, Tom. If you look at the top 10 right now, full of international anglers, including Iconelli, yeah, since he's from the north. Calls he every day. And <laughs> All right. Text him, my phone is blowing up. All right, that's a call. And catching fish. And... I don't know what world I was in just now when I caught her. It was just like reaction. I just didn't even look, honestly. there for Tyler Roy. Tommy, I'm going to ask you a full disclosure real quick. I know you really love those forward-facing sonar events like oh, we had boy. last week with Tyler Rivette. Are, are you happy that it's we like were kind of worse, starting off happy. on a different page today on day number one? <laughs> well, I think variety is always good, good for the, uh, good for the diet, the you know? You like a lot of, oh, a lot of fiber and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> boy, he is in some shallow places. Out of there. Tyler Roy. Ain't that big. Why does he feel so big? Oh, fat. That wasn't a big one. Z, from what I got from that, you, you're classifying the whole Okeechobee event as a forward-facing event, even though one angler was doing it. You're, is that, I mean, we saw a bunch of catches not on that, right? <laughs> it, the key one was the first place. <laughs> so, so that's yeah. kind of why I'm lumping it all in there. Yeah. Do you think we'll see it before the end of this tournament? I go yes. I'd say you're right. I think I'm it's yes. the tool that's here to stay, whether society can handle that mentally or not? Probably not. <laughs> when I think about society. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about doing different things here, I will tell you a story about Lake Seminole. We saw something really different. Better part of three decades ago, Kerry Barrett, who's in the studio with me, and I were there for a tournament. We talked about those tournaments with Jerry McInnes. This was an early, this was the fifth tournament we'd ever covered. This was with the FLW. And on the final day, Jeff McGee, gets in the boat, carries the camera in, they get in the boat, <laughs> they travel all the way up to Chattahoochee and lock into Lake Eufaula, fish for 45 minutes, wins the tournament and comes back. Through fall, wow. all that way. Really? Yeah, most of that way, yeah. How about that? How about that? And dude, he was a stick. Oh, he boy. was a great, great fisherman. Man from Mendenhall, Mississippi. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I'm just wondering, in those 45 minutes, did Kerry eat his lunch that he prepared for the day? Because knowing that there would be no other time the rest of the day. If he had an extra set of arms he might have, he was hanging on to his camera equipment. We didn't really, we were just figuring it out back in those days. Oh, 
It's like the modern day Houston run, except they have about two and a half hours to fish. Yeah, instead yeah. Of, instead of one. There was a lot of the William Tell overture pre played in the, in, the, in the TV show that was made from that thing of him running. And dun, 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 <laughs> understand our colleagues we haven't talked to a ton today understand mercer overstreet guaranteed he got a piece of this oh, yeah. and davy height understand they went fishing this week on you follow oh really should be a great yeah, open absolutely next week. with one of our friends of the show Sorry, joe durham 50. Right. yeah had a big week big time i want to fish everything Got some photos, some nice fish. Saturday for is sure. the first official day of practice for the Bassmaster Opens for the season, and that's at Lake Eufaula. They have yes this yes. year. The one yes. change for the Opens is they have that 30-day off limits, like the Elite Series do practicing. They do have an extended official practice days, so it's Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday through Wednesday. So this area of the country will be popping with. No, yeah. Aspiring and current professional anglers. There's gotta be something in this little pocket. I ain't even fishing. That's what he said, four pounder back there. <sighs> Looks so good. Too good. Wow. Wonder how many people had Brian New on the fantasy team with as good yeah. as he has been here in years past. Slow, slow day. Yeah, not not expected. I figured he'd be one of the big time goers here. Z, I think you're kind of rubbing it in that I put him on my drain the lake, so I appreciate that. <laughs> oh. Pennsylvania angler, I would. Jo Jonathan Kelly, over 15 pounds in the third place. Yeah. He's caught him four pounds. His sophomore year out here. Not a good, good season last year. Good points. Now our morning, morning is going by fast here. Coming up later, we've got some Dave and Davey going to, at noontime, local time, they're going to take us, start us into the afternoon with coverage from on site there, Dave. Mercer and Davey Height. Uh, we're here in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie Moore at the Dakota Lithium Screen O Knowledge. Yeah, there you go. A little bit different vibe, not just my conjecture on Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, but just a little picture of what Lake Seminole is like from the mapping perspective. At Lake Okeechobee, we knew that there would be a couple bays where there's clean water, but mostly same depths across the board. When we look at the breakdown, you can change these days with your mappings apps on your, on your units, the colors, and that can really pop some areas that you wanna target. If you wanna target a depth zone of 20 to 25 or five to 10, and you can see there's a couple, three or four areas that I've screenshotted from uh, the One Boat app that you can see all of the depth shading. So I, you can see that I have one foot is red, that's gonna be right up on the bank, obviously, or dangerous areas. You've got two to five feet in the green area there, and then six to 10 or six to 12 in the yellow, and then 13 and beyond, you start to see the shades of blue. And you can see here on some areas, these are areas that have factored it in. I'm not gonna say who they were, uh, who was fishing them and whatnot, but some of these high spots, some of these shallow green areas where they come right off the river, they can pull up. There's probably good vegetation there as well in these bays. There's a couple different areas that may have a bunch of changes in contours. When you get around those islands up in Spring Creek at times, it goes straight from the river channel in the dark blue to the mid depth of the light blue, and then it gets up into the shallows. And you can see where any of these little turns or edges or those depressions are old ponds. Sometimes they can have deeper grass that has lived and protected from all of the heavy currents that may come during flooding seasons and things. That, that grass could be protected and it could be a place that staging fish or pre 
spawn fish are gathered up. And so there's a couple different choke points in some of these prominent areas that we will start to see and dive into more this weekend. But this is just another look at how you can use the technology and shade the depths the way you want. John Cox probably has all of his shaded to anything on the map. Three feet is dark blue. I don't want to be there. I want to be shallow. But any of these depths that you can change, you can see these deep spots where fish may sit in the winter and pull up to feed or to spawn in some of these areas. So it is an interesting look at a lake. Once you kind of see it from the aerial, you see what traits it has with timber, with grass. Then you can look at the mapping and, and kind of, kind of, I guess, corroborate that yeah. with uh, with your contours. Nice to have. Good stuff right there. Kyle Welcher had a big, big flurry early on. It was a while before he got back on him again. He's on this one. Yeah, and it is, it is a it's a hard hard lake to run, you know, especially early this week. Pulled about a foot of water out of Seminole, and we got to see there's some anglers besides this morning with Ray Hanson, and some anglers did some big time damage this week. Wow, all that for that. Drew Cook throwing back one that doesn't help, and John Cox still mm. committed. Thought it was going to be a big one. On one that he is looking at. That must be a just Phoenix Boat's big yeah, bass of the day. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you would hope. Where he's at is a very obvious area that people go to look for sight fish. It's the easiest place to sometimes see them pull up. So this may be a giant or it may be a big enough one that it's so obvious you want to make sure you can try to get it and others don't come in there and catch it, you know, this afternoon or tomorrow. Some leaderboard movement. Will Davis up to fourth place. Caught a four pounder. Matt Heron. I think he's fishing in the hooch. Got a four and a half pounder. He's up to eighth place with 13 and change. Fantasy Tommy? Yes. Drain the lake. Matt here. He's trying. It was interesting to listen to Drew Benton talk about finding and it is really for uh, you know for a bunch of our viewers that are hardcore sight fishermen know this but if you don't bed fish you know just those little one line sentences that drew benton says you know talking about if he finds a female locked on today to absolutely go ahead and catch her because that female doesn't stay on a bed for three four five six days to where if he finds bigger males you know those three to three and a half pounders to leave those to leave those fish for days two, three, and four, because they'll stay locked on a lot longer. They kind of overlap. They 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 show up earlier than the females. The females come up there, and those they leave, and those males stay to either protect or just to be there. And so, yeah, you could probably get double the time out of a male up shallow than a, than a female. Mm -hmm. well, we cast our lot with a couple of the local favorites to be sure today and Drew Cook early on showed us some good fish catching and boy then Drew Benton went to work. How about that? Yeah, it was a slow 45 minutes for Drew Benton fishing out on the flint deciding to pull stakes up from that and absolutely turning it around with this one. Should be a fun mm -hmm. afternoon in Drew Benton's boat. We'll give her her own side. Oh man, this is just a, a legendary place. Maybe not so many nine pounders possible as there were at Okeechobee, but boy, overall, I mean, the average fish been really, really nice today. Among those who have caught themselves limits, of which there are many so far, we expect yeah, most everybody to get close to a limit today. We certainly hope they do. Hope that you will stick around because there is more coverage coming as we look at our leaderboard from Bass Track. Mike Iaconelli jumped out early. He's been on top of Drew Benton, getting very close to him. Jonathan Kelly again in his second year with the Elite Series. The rookie, Will Davis. Bob Downey, Gerald Swindle. His weight came in a little bit late, but good enough to land him in the top 10. Yoya Fujita, Matt Heron, Drew Cook, and Kyle Welcher. You can stay right here, Bassmaster.com. We've got the live mix coming for you. More coverage in Dave and Davey at noon.
The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Uh huh. I think it's time to quit trying to push this thing. For now.
Take a leak. Shit in a horse though. I want it. I think it was an alligator. That was the male. Oh, flipping hook on him. I love being able to set the hook. Not like last week.
please come out, son. Make these freaking fish bite.
I got close to them too. That wasn't no little in there.
God, dog it. I was parked right on top of his bed a while ago and I seen it. Oh, there's a couple beds right there. Slow that thing down a little bit.
All right. I hate to leave it, but I don't think we have a choice. Let's go. They were fixing up the leaves. Fixing up the sight fish. God, I did not want to do that.
What's wrong? I'm not entirely sure where we're going to roll to yet, but we are rolling. Still sucking. Still sucking bad. That's all I got. Unfortunately, that's all I got.
Let's get out of here. I would have liked to have got that fish, but that male would have been easy to catch. But I couldn't start on him. He was only a three pounder. She ain't been back to the bed yet. Here's a big one. There's a good one. Two garden fry. That one was a little too big to ignore. I'm gonna put this over here. Are these going to be in your way?
The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. For the second week in a row, the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life with the Gamagatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole. Welcome to the 229. What's that? Well, that is Bainbridge, Georgia, our host community this week. And Lake Seminole, one of the most storied lakes in professional bass fishing. We go from fabled Lake Erie, or not Lake Erie, I mean, I guess I'm thinking of home, Lake Okeechobee to Lake Seminole and talking about history, a guy who has a win here in the past, Mike Iaconelli. People have been wondering what's wrong. Well, nothing is wrong. Mike Iaconelli is right back where you're used to seeing him with 21 pounds, four ounces. Chased by pre-tournament favorite Drew Benton, Jonathan Kelly, Austin Felix, and Jacob Porosnik. Where's it all happening? It's happening here on beautiful Lake Seminole. Not a giant body of water when it comes to competition standards but it is in a giant state the great state of georgia and as i said the 229 bainbridge georgia that is our host community and lake seminole our playing field welcome into our on location coverage and i'm joined by hall of famer angler of the year and bassmaster classic champion davy height and i don't I mean, it's only our second event, but already there was more trash talking about pre-fish going into this event than I've heard in quite some time. Yeah, it's it's just a great fishery in the weather. The weather has set up perfectly. Uh, last week at Lake Okeechobee, the first couple of days of practice, the wind blew, uh, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. So practice was much tougher there. Here, I think a lot of guys, whether they would admit it or not, had a, a very good practice. The the big thing this, that we're seeing happen, though, is the weather has, has become so mild, so to speak, 80s for highs and, and upper 60s for lows at night that these fish are doing a lot of moving. They're transitioning. We have a new moon coming. Uh, a lot of these fish will be going to the bank to spawn, but there's still a lot of fish that are, are pre-spawning that will not go to the bank this week. So I still think things like Mike Iaconelli has done so far this morning. Uh, we'll see more of that from different anglers this week. Well, that just proves that I don't know what I was talking about because I was going the total other direction, Davey. I was saying they were telling me it was going to be bad, but maybe you have figured it out and they are liars. This is your Toyota Midday Report. Let's catch you up with what's been happening, not what they're saying, but Stone Cold Kyle Welch. To clear that up a little bit, though, Dave, you know they do tell different people different stories. They are fishermen just like you and I. So, But, but Kyle Welcher uh, having a good start this morning. A lot of people thought, hey, we need a camera with him because he loves Lake Seminole. This is right up his alley. And Kyle Welcher said, no, this is not right up my alley. I don't really like fishing this way. But he's done really good this morning. We've seen him with some good catches. He, he's at like 15 to 18th place most of the day. Uh, that's not a bad place to be if you're saying that, no, you don't really like the way this lake sets up. The, the big thing, the big difference about the way this sets up is the Chattahoochee and the Flint River coming in, and some anglers choose to stay a little closer over on the Flint River side, some going over to the Chattahoochee. I don't know if that was your way of saying the anglers lie to me or not, but we'll deal with that afterwards. <laughs> Let's go over to this week's, last week's champion. Well, well, it's the gun show, Tyler Rivette. Yeah, so you were so right last week. It was the gun show. It continued to be the gun show. He stayed in contention. Yeah. We had a different leader every day last week at Lake Okeechobee. Tyler Rivette was the one that fortunately was the leader when you handed the blue trophy, when it was the day to hand that blue trophy out and $100,000. So I'm sure he was glad to get that. Uh, heard him talking a lot this morning with the live camera on him about how different this past week has been since he, uh, or this week has been since he won that Bassmaster Elite Tournament on Lake Okeechobee. So a nice guy, a young angler with a lot of success before coming to the Elites. It's good to see him hold that blue trophy over his head. I don't think that will be the last time we see him do that. One of the pre-tournament favorites, and he drew quite a crowd to take off this morning, Drew Cook. Yeah, everybody knows that Drew Benton and Drew Cook love to fish here. They have a lot of history here, grew up fishing here. So uh, certainly glad we have cameras on Drew Cook and Drew Benton here th this week. Drew Cook, Andrew Benton, they, they talk a lot about 
what they're doing, uh, you know, we've talked about this last week. Moore and Ingers seem to work together. Uh, they were working together this morning. I'm sure they will continue to. Started on a place in the Flip River that they were both so, so excited about possibly catching 20, 25 pounds. Uh, you know, in the first 30 or 45 minutes, that did not work out. So you see here, Drew Cook Nothing goes else. to the bank, does what he loves to do, uh, sight fishing, and it's done well today also. From one Drew to another, Drew Benton. Drew Benton, like I mentioned, thought he was going to get off to a great start. I even talked with him this morning. He said, man, I hope I don't even have to burn, so to speak, catch and bring to the scales. Some Any of my side fish, they were so excited about where they were going to start on the main river channel, but that did not work out. Those fish are moving, but I don't think all of those fish staging on those places in the river ha have all gone to the bank at once. Uh, there's a different current today than there has been in practice. They were drawing a lot of water, and that current will make them fish set up differently from one day to the next. So uh, hopefully that place will pay off for them later in the week, but like Drew really Cook, Drew Benton had to go to the bank, use some of the fish that he found on beds during practice, and uh, he's in second place right now with about 20 pounds. Former Elite Series Rookie of the Year, Drew Benton. I talked to Drew Cook at takeoff. He was one of the first ones to arrive and said he literally did not sleep last night. I don't know about Benton and how his sleep went, so but let's check in with him live. We switched it up a little bit, um, trying to save some of the sight fish, so... We came back and I'm fishing some areas that they'll both be moving into spawn and kind of staging in hopes that I can make one or two more calls and uh, and not have to go catch one more or two off bed. Um, it's been a good day so far. It's just hard to get bit fishing for me. I mean, the bites I have got gotten cast and I think we're spawn related. I mean, they were either up there on the bed or fixing to make a bed. So we're just a little, doing a little experiment right now. We've got a little breathing room, got some time. So we're keeping everything honest. One thing you, that I noticed he said right there that might confuse some people, uh, it's just hard to get bit just fishing. Yeah. And he's got 20 pounds. Well, when he says just fishing, he means not sight fishing. Um, and, and he did talk about that this morning, that it really surprised him, other than the one or two places that he and Drew Cook had found that were, like, loaded with pre-spawn fish, how hard it is to get bit just fishing, just what he said. And, and by that is what he's doing now. He's, he's fishing some submerged vegetation and usually this time of the year with the water temperatures about like they are you can throw a bladed jig a swim jig uh, a, a crankbait a variety of baits and get bites and that's been difficult for for drew benton and some others this week dave you've been in similar situations coming into an event as an odds-on favorite on a body of water that's i mean you can't even explain it's not like a golf or being good on a course. I mean, these are bodies of water that the, these anglers are very intimate with and have not just Elite Series memories, but childhood memories from it. What does that feel like to be that angler? Well, th that's, uh, you know, a great topic because anglers, you know, it's an individual sport, put a lot of pressure on themselves to win everywhere they go. But when you're around your, your hometown, your family, your friends, you put a lot more pressure on yourself. You know, say say Drew Benton has won at, let's just make up a lake, you know, Lake Murray, South Carolina. When you go back there, he's going to be a favorite, and there's be a little pressure, but not the pressure when you're around your hometown and you're around your family. Well, one way to get over that pressure is, is to catch them. And here's some of those fish catches right from earlier. Wow, you can see that fish on the bed. Great, great footage there that's i thought they were right on top of that fish but they're quite a ways away from it <laughs> that was a cool fish catch anything if anything that's gonna get rid of i mean when the angler's going for style on day one you, you know he's confident yeah can't remember which one was a small one
Not surprising to see his buddy. Another person that, like you said, a lot of pressure on him. Did not sleep last night, Drew Cook. Obviously looking at a fish on the bed right here. Dealing with lack of sleep. But days like this are literally what dreams are made of. Big bass, big stage, big dreams. Dreams. Oh, we got him. Cook's having a good morning, nothing wrong with that, but that's the exact type fish, size fish, that he talked about this morning. He hoped he did not have to try to fish for today. So their expectations were, were, you know, that's why he didn't sleep last night. <laughs> he expected to really set the woods on fire, so to speak, this morning on, the, on their first stop. Both Drews, last week's champion, Tyler Rivette, and the adventures continue for John Cox. Had a boat accident yesterday, ran up on a stump, got a piece of rebarb that he said put in about a, he must have been exaggerating, he said a four foot hole, but I mean, I feel like he was exaggerating. Went to a local welding shop, got it welded up, not, he thinks it's okay. <laughs> he said he was gonna take it easy, but really he said it was one of the scariest boating experiences of his life because after, here's, I mean, here's where the adventure really starts. He's stuck on it, so he hammers, gas to get off of it and then he stops checks his compartments the water's up to his ankles already in these compartments and he's like oh this is a lot bigger than i thought throws it in forward jumps it up on the bank <laughs> and um he said he went to the front to see how bad it was stuck and still realized it was his, the motor was still running he had to turn it off oh my goodness <laughs> So but I talk, he's safe, and all's good. I talked with him about that a little bit this morning also. That's not when the danger uh, was over. He was going to go get another. I think he's got another boat that's a year or two old or something like that. Okay. He was going to go swap them out and somehow found out that a local person that might weld the bottom it. of his boat, repair trust. it so Don't he could use that crazy. one. Just got to trust it. So... He took it to them, and they said, oh, yeah, sure, we, we can do that. And, uh, he said, well, you know, the, the fuel tank is right there, you know, just <laughs> inches from where that big hole is. And so the guy said, ah, oh, don't, no worries. We can weld it <laughs> at six inches from the fuel tank. Yeah, and he said uh, he waited outside about 100 feet away. <laughs> but he did get it all fixed up and was able to start this morning in the same boat. So appreciate those guys for helping him out. Life in the Cox Lane. To it's the never color. boring. Good solid fish there for Kyle Welcher. Been watching him on live this morning, doing a lot. It's He's fun to watch fishing. Yeah. When I'm out on the water like I was this morning, uh, I, I get to see different anglers and kind of what you, you figure out what they like to do, what they look for. And he, what you he mixes it up. You'll see him doing so many different things all in one day. He really, really well, keeps it mixed up. It like. The right way. Not the wrong way, the right way. Kyle Welchers, I mean, he's just different. I've said that, like, from the first time I talked to him, the way he thinks at things. And you hear a lot of hype around him. I mean, he's got a decent resume, made some classics, obviously a bridesmaid finish to Jason Christie. But I, I know he's got, I mean, it's just, he's one of those guys that you're like, he has to have his breakout moment. He's just, uh, some guys don't have to wait a long time, though, no. you know? <laughs> and Kyle Welch are working real hard trying to make that breakout moment. And it took this guy exactly, um, probably three and a half days. It was a four day tournament, but it was oh, over dear. halfway through the final day. Just two years ago? Yeah. It seems like five years. Made it through the opens. Oh. Um, one and open and that one that open young? AOY. Very he surprising to see him God catch his first fish. Feels good. <laughs> He's known as a come from behind angler. Loves I don't it. think he had to do this to us today. Oh. Wait till, uh, you know, after 
lunch time to catch his first fish, so he's definitely going to have to do some. I call him bad. Some good things here in the second half of the day to get up there. I think hell's about to freeze over, but I did catch a bass. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness, that was a long time. 12 of 19. Speaking of pressure you put on yourselves, I mean, you wouldn't think, uh, or I would actually, and you would, but most people, or a lot of people, wouldn't think that he would be he under that much pressure to catch his first fish today. Uh, but he's, you can certainly tell, he is uh, relieved that he has that first fish in his live well. That's a bad feeling, son. What is that feeling, Davey? Is it voices in your head? What, what do you Jesus. start to it's feel? It's uh, pain in, the, in your stomach, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, a little voices in the head, but they don't hurt as much as the pain in the stomach. <laughs> it, it's just like you, you're saying, I can't believe this. I can't, I can't believe this. I can't believe it's 11 o'clock. I haven't caught one. I can't believe it's 12 o'clock. I haven't caught one. I mean, I thought it might be tough, but it can't be this tough. All those things. Then you start thinking, maybe nobody got them. But yeah. then you then you then you correct that. You know, you're allowing yeah. yourself to yeah. daydream that, but then you're quickly reminded that somebody always gets yes. them. I personally have never been to a tournament weigh-in where nobody caught them, <laughs> <laughs> and that's over uh, forty-five years. Tyler Rivette getting dinner again. It's his move. This could be an old. Look out, going to win the tournament now, Davey. Yep. Found his spot. He's saying to himself, boy, you better be glad this is tournament day here. Can't it wait. would be supper for me and some of my friends. Loins. Watch it. Watch it. That is a rare sight right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Ben off his best Elite Series season ever last year. Didn't have a win. You know, obviously had a season with a win, but just as far as Angler of the Year, as far as how often he was in the top ten. Rookie of the Year. Well, that, He's yeah, done I'm, it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's had success. I'm, my point is he had success the we moment he stepped out today, on the Davey. lead. We series. are totally disagreeing with each other. <laughs> the Getting cloudy, Davey. I mean, it definitely feels like it's changing here. How's that going to affect this this afternoon? Uh, the guys that are sight fishing, and there's quite a few of them, would rather that sun come out. Not only will those fish move up a little better, but being able to see those fish and fish for them. And like Drew Benton put it, it's not easy getting bit just fishing for them. Well, I was hoping you would kind of pump it up and be like, oh, it's going to turn them on. They're going to catch bigger and badder bass than you ever imagined. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back from Lake Seminole. Yes! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Second week in a row, a Bassmaster Elite Series event is in your life. And we went from the Palms to the Pines, just six hours up the road here in Bainbridge, Georgia. The Gamagetsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole. And atop the leaderboard, a former champion on this very body of water, Mike Iaconelli with 21 pounds, 4 ounces. Drew Benton, pre-tournament favorite, 19 pounds, 12 ounces. Jonathan Kelly in third place. Porosnik in the mix. And Will Davis, what a start to his Elite Series career. Bass Nation National Champion. And for the second event in a row, the second event in his Elite Series career, he is in the mix. So it's great to see our top 10, Davey Height. 
We talked a little earlier that um, some anglers takes a while to get going and some anglers are new only in name. They prove at the first event that they definitely have the game in. Brian New took his win his very first event in 2021 in the great state of Florida. In Florida, Palatka, Florida. Yeah, Brian New came on the scenes and uh, made no mistake about it. I'm here to win an Elite Series tournament and I'm here to win AOI. Well, the first came true in a hurry. His very first tournament he won on uh, St. John's River. The final day there, kind of in the Aster area on the uh, just south of Lake George. Caught these fish uh, in the afternoon to really just kind of blow it away, so to speak, on the, on the final day. You can see how excited uh, to be your first event on the Bassmaster Elite Series and get handed that blue trophy. Absolutely incredible. And it's, it's, had, a, it's had a great short career even this is just his third year out here but uh certainly he's had a good career started off right on top with the uh win at this on the st john's river in 2021 and even coming from the Bassmaster opens the trail that he took he won an open he was also an open angler of the year and speaking of opens a lot of excitement about the eq kicking off next week next week down the road at lake eufaula and now out live with Brian New. In a position he is not accustomed to being in, in 89th right now. Dang, what have they got to be? I can't remember. Looks it like he's over on the Chattahoochee. Let's, it's moved around quite a bit this morning. Is it just me or I can't have anyone Come. say that word? Chattahoochee without to way down under. Oh. Did you uh, sing that also? <laughs> Every time I hear someone say it, it they goes have that in Canada. Okay. No, but I spend a lot of time <laughs> with Americans. Just getting music in Canada, and we're excited about it. Uh, I'm with you there. I bet I have heard that tune like a hundred times in the last three days. Speaking of banjos, John Cox. That wasn't very nice. Boy, a lot of folks expected to see John Cox really put on a show here today. A lot of time left. Still time. Here we go. Mm, I felt good to catch something. Yeah, <laughs> it's about time. <sighs> yes, it took forever. I was starting to worry that one we threw back. I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Talking to John Cox this morning, he, no secret, was probably going to sight fish quite a bit in this tournament. I think anyone that knows, uh, keeps up with John Cox knows that, but gosh, he had a, an eight pounder, a six pounder, a couple of really, really good fish that I, I, I felt like by talking to him, he thought he'd be able to catch this morning pretty easily, but they were difficult. He spent a lot of time on one fish. I assume maybe that was the eight pounder he was talking about. But just some fish you might spend an hour on and not catch just on the other end of the spectrum, he might spend five minutes on his next three or four and they could be good ones. I mean, it just the way, that's the way sight fishing goes. Uh, some that you think are gonna be easy to catch end up being difficult and, and some that you might think are, would be difficult you catch first cast. Little known fact, John Cox loves to hot tub, has one every night. Hot tub. Hot tub. Loves the hot tub. Actually, we did a podcast together, and it was our idea to have it in the hot tub. But when we got it all set up, he said it felt weird. <laughs> With y'all being in the hot tub? No, I was at home. Oh, okay. assume, But he okay. was. I was tubbing, say that would be weird. He was all excited about it, and then he said, this feels weird. They were on that So we had to come up with a new area. title because we were going to call it Cox in a Tub. Oh, look how quick it looks like he's hooked up again. Small fish, but 
Keeper. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Damn sure can lose it the first day. You have to day. deal with all of those we'll males. He's catching here. them that close together. Oh, yeah. Three. There's some big girls, not all far. Right. Yep. Let's keep going. Yeah, well, I wasn't worried about John Cox not catching five fish today. Even though just a few minutes you ago, were a little he was bit, a long Davey. way from that. It felt like a little bit, i got to be honest. <laughs> Those voices were probably going around his head. I can't believe I've only got three. I got a couple more. We might just get one more. We might just start looking. That boating accident that John had yesterday, he said it was the scare, most scared he's ever been in a boat. And for those that don't know, he once almost died in a boat. And here's a kicker. Look from right above him. Years ago, FLW event, he gets thrown hooked from the boat. Gets thrown. The boat starts doing circles around him. He gets knocked out. He go floats all the way down to the bottom go because his life jacket didn't go off. His co-angler yeah. saved his life. Do you know who his co-angler was? Uh, you gave it away. Brian, Brian knew. knew. I would not have known. <laughs> wow. So the life jacket didn't inflate? No. And no. the kill switch didn't work either? The kill switch, he said he had the kill switch on, but nothing changed. It was, I don't know. That, well, I don't, I Everything we say is officially unofficial, right. uh, alleged, right. and other <laughs> legal words. Strictly hearsay. We'll, yes. Strictly yes. hearsay. We need to call uh, Joe Durham, help us out with some legal yes. speak so yes. we can get out of a sticky situation. Speaking I was just Joe telling the Durham, story. Have you been getting any calls from any of the EQ anglers after you posted yeah. all those pictures yeah, of was, Big Fish? <laughs> I didn't realize the tournament was there <laughs> until we left and posted it, and then a lot of the EQ anglers... Decided to say hey. <laughs> hey, I, no reason in particular that I called. Just want to say hi. Yeah. Just wondering <laughs> how things are going at that tournament and maybe some others that are within an hour or so away. I'm really surprised. I'm sure he kept it honest. I went I went down to Spring Creek this morning because, you know, just had a tournament one with forward facing sonar. They're standing timber in Spring Creek. Surely there's going to be 30 boats in here. Not a lot of people doing that. A few, one in particular, not in this four box, but is having a good tournament. I don't want to give that away quite yet. But I was surprised not to see Tyler Revent there. Just just because, you know. But uh, I bet he kept it honest and just didn't, you know, him and quite a few others that I thought might be there were not there. Fishing, uh, using the four faces sonar in the standing timber. There's number five for Cox. I can't wait to tell him on stage right after Davey Hyde said you weren't going to catch the limit on live. I did not say that. I can't, well, don't you throw implied me under the bus. There was an impl impl <laughs> implying tone. All I know is this fish has either got a lot of vegetation <laughs> and it making, or John Cox has got a real big one right here. I haven't seen it yet, but he's doing a lot of grunting. Here we go. A little better. Uh, there you go. A little oh, better. He was grunting, wasn't he? He was. Oh, gee. Crazy look. The braid got its tail one time. <laughs> well, all right. What's that for? Four. So I think he let one of those fish go that we've seen him catch, and he mentioned Must've. he had already done that one other time today. Uh, maybe a male that he didn't want to take away from put in his boat or in his live well. Tyler Rivette comes into this event leading progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year racing. There's only one way to do that, and that's to win the first event of the season. To do that at this point in the season, anyways. But Tyler Rivette... Doing something different yeah. than everyone else in our field. And when it all finished, it was definitely different because he was the only one standing with a blue trophy. He was. And, you know, we talked about that on day one, how he was doing something different. He got off to a good start on day two. He was doing something different. He's left alone. That's going to be huge here on Lake Okeechobee. But then day three, I think we all thought, man, I can't believe this is going away from him. He had his slowest day on day three. But day four, Tyler Rivette got us all going early in the morning with a seven plus pounder. You see this fish here, the sun just coming up. You can tell by the low light. 
smiles on his face, and he knew that he had a great chance to do this right here up on stage with you, Dave Mercer. Sun's out, guns out, and Tyler Rivette becomes a Bassmaster Elite Series champion. His family was still celebrating this morning. They were handing out king cakes to everybody. It was a beautiful sight. King cakes are, are great. Great, great, great. Tyler Vett with his first win here. Good way to get the 2023 season going with a with a victory. And not having a bad day today. Currently unofficially in 35th place. What a whirlwind that's got to be. You know, to, when we have back-to-backs, to win that, and especially your first win. I mean, there's nothing like your first win. And then, and then literally to get in the vehicle right away and drive, you know, then you're focused on pre-fish. Like, at, at the end of this, he has to have the world's biggest adrenaline dump. Yeah, it's uh, a little disappointing to, to win on the front end of a back-to-back -back because you really have no time to enjoy and to celebrate. You... You know, literally have to drive, or in, I bet in his case, his, his parents here, somebody helped him drive straight up here to the next event and get out the next morning and go uh, go try to figure him out on Lake Seminole. Tyler loves really, really like hard that frog metal. action, like real, like like that stuff that makes people angry. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When they come in the boat, think he'll be hearing some of that in the next three weeks after this week, leading into the classic. Likes to get in mosh pits at concerts and stuff. No joke. I know you're looking at me like I can't believe I'm working with this idiot <laughs> and, and he's making stuff up, but this is all legit <laughs> factoids. Had a mohawk in the offseason for a little while. You have done a lot of homework on him in the last <laughs> three or four days, haven't you? No, it's just when there's peculiar stuff about people, I focus on that. Had a mohawk in the offseason. He really did. Do you think that's what gave him the... The mojo for no. The first I'm just event. telling you random facts about him. So he's leading uh, AOY. If he wins AOY, you think like eighty of our hundred anglers will have mohawks in the off season this coming? No, year? no, no. Oh, no. I mean, that would be wonderful, though. Could you imagine? Who do you think would have the best? Who? I mean, Prosnick could be a strong Mohawk, I believe. I think Matt could be a strong Mohawk. Go from mullet to Mohawk. Oh, I mean, what can't he? He's a multifaceted <laughs> international angling superstar, a man of many, many talents. But a lot, a lot of talent on display, and this is the guy on Mike Iaconelli's tail right now. Drew Benton, a free tournament favor coming into this. Both of the Drews. And man, how sweet would this be to be his second Elite Series title? Really, really sweet, probably. Yeah, it would be really, really sweet. Thought he was going to have a, a quick start this morning. It did not work out that way for him, but uh, he knew where some were on the bed and that he hoped to save until uh, second, third, maybe even the fourth day, but had to resort to those. Fortunately for Drew Benton and Drew Cook, I think they know where all these fish should be moving up this week and a lot more fish to move up for them this week. I don't think they uh, are going to run out of fish. They know all the little the little places that these fish seem to spawn. You see so many other anglers looking in these pockets and little shallow areas, and he's out in open water. A lot of history and a lot of game planning came into this we'll event. And at the halfway point of day number one, he is chasing down Mike Iaconelli. Mike Iaconelli returning to the scene of one of his previous victories and trying to make a lightning strike twice. Yes! Yeah. the water! No way! Woo! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. On location coverage here in Bainbridge, Georgia, the Oak City 
no one for all of the oak trees, but m bountiful amounts of nature here. Davy Hyde, and that right there is a turtle. That is a turtle. And that's a gator, not a real big one compared to a lot of the ones you see here at Lake Seminole, but that is a gator. The sun's not out really well, but it's out enough and the temperature's up enough that those gators and turtles are, are up out of the water enjoying the, the warm weather we've had. And I think the warm weather has has really affected a lot of these fishermen, like Drew Benton said. If you're not looking at them, it's not real easy to get bites, but Mike Iaconelli got some bites early and often this morning. And the big, big key to, to him, not so much the numbers, but it seemed like this morning every fish he was putting in the boat was 23 and 5 pounds. Mike Iaconelli took the lead early, and nobody has been able to catch him. But this is just day number one, 104 anglers in our field for the first two days. Then we'll cut it down to 50 after day number two and the top 10 fishing championships Sunday. One of my favorite anglers to watch. I, I mean, I know if I was more professional in my job, I wouldn't have a favorite, but his natural enthusiasm and excitement for fishing is contagious, and I got it, Davey Height. Looks like he's about to lean on one right here. Yep. Uh, That's five. That five. Well, I'll be dang. <laughs> well, we got a call? <laughs> Maybe on the next one. Let's see your green's probably next. Go. I like watching him also, by the way. And I've really come to appreciate his personality. He's always in a good mood. He's always the same guy, whether he had three fish in live well at noon, or he's got 30 pounds in the live well. Drew Cook hooked up. I got a story about that too, but I'll fill you in on it later. <laughs> There's reasons for everything. It's a marvelous. Really good fish here for Drew Cook. Big male. A little unusual to see him with a spinning rod in his hand. He does most of his sight fishing with a bait caster. Maybe that one took a little, little plan B or plan C to get him to bite. I feel like we're going to see a lot of both Drews as this tournament goes on. I, I feel like today's not the only day you're going to see him on camera. I think we're going to see a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And your favorite angler to watch, John Cox. Has a long day today, I heard him mention. Doesn't weigh until 5 o'clock, so still a lot of fishing. There he is. A lot of fishing left for John Cox today. Okay, so here's the story, Davey Height. I asked John, why are you always happy? And he said he's had some tough jobs over the years. Well, let's watch him do this job for a second. This? This will definitely help. That's a little bonus. One we just saw him put in live whales. Of yes. Fraction. Yes. Here he comes, Davey Height. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe we'll cast a little longer. What the heck? Oh, gosh. I'm terrible. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So how long ago has it been? 30 minutes ago he had three and nothing really to speak of as far as size? It's incredible how, yeah, but he was acting the same like we mentioned uh, yeah. 30 minutes ago as he is now, but he's, he's, uh, he's where we, you know, kind of in the ballpark of where we think John Cox would be at this point in the day. Keeping in mind, he was a very late boat leaving out, uh, likely didn't get a start maybe where he wanted to because a lot of boats, uh, were out before him. So green's next. Thank you. 
I mean, he's four hours of fishing, basically, left. Yes, yes. And four of the best hours for him, I would think. He w wants that sun, hopefully, to be out. Like it, we hope it'll be this afternoon. We'll see these fish so bad. I don't think he was looking at that fish. Though. I think he just caught that fish working his way down the bank. Just casting. Yep. So I asked him, why are you always happy? How are you able to be so relaxed under moments that, you know, most people would crumble? He's just relaxed. This is exactly what you would see if he was fun fishing on a Tuesday. Now, remember, all of my stories come directly from him. I don't search any facts on this. This is what he claims. He said when he was a kid, he was he was really hyper and he, you know, was all over the place and he didn't do good at school or anything. And, and But he loved riding a BMX bike. He was a big BMXer, you know, whoop de doos and jumps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He took a fall once, hit his head, said he was in the hospital, got concussed and all sorts of stuff. Claims he woke up. <laughs> and from that day forward, he's just had this mellow. Per he said it totally changed my personality. He said, and, and he also, like, if you really get him to open up, he'll start telling you about things like he believes he can hear things better than other people and sense things better than other people. Like, you ever see the movie about the kid who breaks his arm and then he comes back as a great pitcher? That's what happened to John Cox, basically, except it gave him this super angling prowess mm -hmm. that we get to yeah, witness just, today. Yeah. Just let, so, it, let it sink. Yeah. One fall and bump the head changed so him yeah. forever. Kids will be jumping off BMXs all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many elite anglers maybe at the end of the year might want to <laughs> bump their head. I know there's a few times that some people, my wife probably wanted me to bump my head, that's for sure. I think he'll help. This fish will definitely help Kyle Welcher. It's over a pound, eight ounces. out on the main river there just below Wingetts. On location coverage with myself, Dave Mercer, and the Hall of Famer, Bassmaster Classic champion, two-time angler of the year, Davey Height. It's this tournament, I mean, I don't know if I have a beat on it. Like, other than the Drews moving forward, like, is there a clear cut? And I can only, we don't, we haven't, we don't have a camera on him, so we haven't seen anything. I mean, he totally could be lying about his weight, couldn't he? Did we check it with anyone? <laughs> no, you never know about I can and his weight. Sometimes he seems to underestimate uh, and sometimes overestimate. The, the thing that I heard when we were able to watch I can a little bit this morning, his, his marshal did a great job. I can was saying there was a shad spawn going on. I can't wait to ask him what kind of shad were spawning this morning uh, with the water temperatures being what I know they are right now. That'll be, that'll be, uh, a good question to ask him but you're right i agree 100 percent. the tournament just kind of seems to be going a little bit of everywhere right now but that makes it fun yeah it's only day one and we're only halfway through it and uh there's a lot more to come this afternoon a big way and that's the cool thing about this sport nothing's official till it officially hits our scales and mike iconelli unofficially your leader with 21 pounds four ounces and you look at that leaderboard, they're just continuously trying to chase them down. Davey Height, what's going to happen this afternoon? Well, I think there's going to, the weights are going to get better and better. Obviously, uh, whether the sun comes out or not might hinder that a little bit, but I think we will definitely see the leader have more than 21 pounds, four ounces, whether it's Mike Iaconelli or someone else. I just got to say it because uh, in seventh place, I've been practicing all week. Joey Cifentes, Joey Cifentes. TZ, Ronnie, and Such will be back on the other side. Yeah! Another! No way!
Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Oh, it's a happy Thursday, that is for sure. The second Thursday in a row we have had Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament Action 2023 for you. The second stop after being at Okeechobee last week here in the state of Georgia on Lake Seminole. Lake Seminole, Tommy, just historic. I think we said the third ever BASS event before it was, I guess, technically deemed as BASS, but this lake's relatively young, though. 1957, when the lake yep. opened up, the dam was formed a few years prior. So it's got about 65, 70 years of tournament action on Lake Seminole, and it's been good since we started. Absolutely. A lot of history, a lot of history of the Bassmasters was written right here on this lake, yet we have not been here in almost a decade. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders and Ronnie Moore here. And, and Ronnie, we we saw a great move by Mike Iaconelli early on to jump out well ahead of the pack for a good long time. Drew Benton did what he could to, to run him down and has gotten very, very close within a couple of pounds, pound and a half of him right now. Yes, and that's the big thing, is seeing some of those guys who had expectations of maybe catching them pre-spawn offshore didn't come to fruition. They had to make adjustments, and now we're seeing those weights rise up. We saw about a 10 minute period where we saw the Phoenix Boats Big Bass caught by Austin Felix, a 7-5, and a few minutes later, Jacob Prosnick with a 7-0. Yep. There are certain bite windows that we will see at Seminole this week where the biggest fish in the lake all bite at the same time. Well, let's take a look at the leaderboard, unofficial according to Bass Track right now. Mark Zona joins us as well. We got the suits here on hand, and, and Z, we look at Mike Iaconelli, big move to start the tournament. Now, he's hanging in there, man, I'm telling you. He's, he's he survived yeah, the onslaught. Uh, right. And, you know, Tommy, the really the weird dynamic is we've been tracking Iconelli all day long. He has done just dug, I mean, trenched into one spot to a one cast spot. And what's been interesting is to watch how many different anglers have fished through the exact area that Iconelli is guarding uh, pretty much. It looks like he's going to guard it all day long. We even seen Drew Benton within about 50 yards of Iconelli right before our midday break. So it took day two is going to be very interesting with Iconelli early in the morning. Absolutely. Let's launch on into our Toyota midday report now, starting with one of the anglers we've been in the boat with all day, and that is John Cox. Go, I'm sorry, the Yamaha midday report. John Cox. Oh, yeah, nice. and really kind of looking at yes. what has gone on. <laughs> John yes. Cox said, you would think Seminole would be my friend throughout my career. It definitely has not been John Cox's friend. But if you really start to, we talked about this earlier today, if you really look at the average size of males on this lake, there are going to be so many bags today on day number one kind of in that 15 pound range just because if you really look at the way fishing was early this morning with guys like john cox tyler revet so many just solid males being caught that's the tyler revet of course coming off his big victory last week at Lake Okeechobee. uh he's our leader and progressive angler of the year points uh at least until the end of today i told you tommy tyler revet was going to be punching and frogging I just thought it was last week. Yeah. But he's doing it this oh. week. He's he's doing the his normal Louisiana game and staying inside of our top 50 cut right now. But for Rivette, I mean, what a great start to his season and maybe backing it up with another cut here this week. Tyler Rivette not laying off after that first big victory. Obviously, hats off to him for that. Drew Cook, one of the huge, one of the overwhelming favorites coming into this one. Yeah, big time. And Drew Cook starting off this morning, shallow, shallow, clean spots in the flint. Caught a limit fast was really as far as the guys we had on camera this morning going to work, getting in a little flurry at about 845 to 9 o'clock. But Drew Cook, you nailed it, Tommy. One of the biggest favorites in this tournament, still sitting unofficially with just over 13 pounds of bass. Right now, he's currently just outside, one spot outside of our top 20. And of course, plenty of time left to fish on this day for Drew Cook, who grew up fishing this lake. Of course, he's originally from Tallahassee to the south here, but now lives here in the state of Georgia. Nothing else. Also spending some time in the boat today with young Kyle Welcher. Kyle Welcher also from the area here. Chattahoochee's kind of his home waters, Lake Harding. Places yeah, upstream. And, and Really you got that uh, kind of blew us all away telling us yesterday this this style lake does not set up good for him, which kind of threw a curveball to all of us. We thought that this tournament really in Kyle Welcher's wheelhouse, the way he fishes, predominantly a pretty awesome shallow water angler getting a lot of bites. 
and one of those fishermen really fishing within an eyesight of Iconelli all morning long, Kyle Welch. A little bit of a similarity in some cases to last week in Lake Okeechobee where certain places are attracting a big crowd, making it a little bit more com complicated to get the job done that you want to get done. But Drew Benton made a key move to start the day, Mark Zona. Yeah, really starting off in the Flint just down from his roommate Drew Cook this morning thought he had one of them spots, one of those magic hard spots where he could do damage early to, and made the comment, I don't want to sight fish on days one and two. I'd rather save that till the weekend. Well, he started out in the Flint. That didn't happen. As you said, Tommy Sanders, when he made the move into Spring Creek, that is when his day accelerated. Majority of his damage was done in about 90 minutes fishing in spring. Let's keep on going. <laughs> Drew Benton, of course, was a Rookie of the Year back in 2016, even before he became a Bassmaster Elite Series member known for his sight fishing ability. So obviously a lot of people in his bucket of fantasy are, are picking him huge percent. Yeah, he was in bucket D and that's, you don't expect him to go to the state of Florida at Okeechobee and come out of there with a, a no. finish in the 80s or 90s. But Benton, that whether it's not lining up the way they wanted to, whether they wanted it cold, the one thing that we know is that they're going to have plenty of places to at least try or check. If those fish are leaving them, they'll have the opportunity to maybe find some other fish in other water that other people don't know to think about as Drew Cook swings one in. Sweet Yamaha midday report right there, Tommy. One thing from our friend uh, lives near the lake. Talked about uh, him a little bit. Rob Newell, who's covered so many tournaments, so many tournaments, yep. and grew up fishing on this lake, said one thing. He's been watching a lot of our coverage today, making the comment, and and we've seen this with when a lot of the fish go to spawning, it just gets so hard to get bit just fishing. I think Dave and and Davey might have talked about that a little bit during their break. But we ran into tournaments like this when it gets warm all at once and you get one of those massive pushes of fish wanting to lock on beds. Man, the guys that are just fit, we've seen that with Brian New today. He said he was going to totally ignore that game and, and get, you know, get in the crowd with so many other fishermen in spring. The guys that are just fishing today, like hats off to Kyle Welcher because he's, he's made it work. Guys like Iconelli have made it work, but for the most part. This was moments ago with that are Kyle just Welcher. fishing not happening. That was, I think that fish missed his frog once. Now, Z, whether he had a lot of experiences similar, seminal or not, whether he thought it set up for him or not, this just goes, it feels like a Kyle Welcher tournament in the fact of they're not doing, they're not all doing something. He could go throw a bladed jig, he could go throw a frog, he could go flip, it's just day by day, and it seems like he is one like Gerald Swindle, who just adjusts and throws whatever looks good in the right spots. Just feel like a Carl Jacobson tournament. He just had a five pound call. He got a six pounders up to 19 and a half. After sixth place last week, he's tied for fourth. So he'd be actually the, uh, in, in contemporary terms, number one progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. he jumped yeah. fishing, yeah. fishing on fire. How right about now? that? First Australian to lead uh, progressive Angler of the Year. Down <laughs> there we go, another first. <laughs> yeah. Kyle Welcher with that fish right there put himself back in the top 10 from just outside the top 20. So things are happening. Moves are being made. Yeah, and definitely one in that top 10 to watch. Jacob Poroznik, this is one of those tournaments, man. Jacob Poroznik, so, so good at sight fishing.
He was mentioned a lot among our uh, opens anglers picking fantasy teams. Did that cause you to put him on your fantasy team, Sue? Uh, almost. Oh. <laughs> well, that doesn't Probably should have. I'm sorry. There's a lot of teams we were talking about, Tommy, that looked great before takeoff, and based on what Bass have just shocked. I mean, there's some guys with zeros that we have. They have marshals, or they have a time with no fish. Like, surely not none of our. None of our pundits, right? No, no, of course not. Okay. I mean, well, we're never wrong. Thank kidding? goodness. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You gave me a start there, yeah, Ron. Exactly. The last guy who had a time stamp, actually, David Mullins, caught his first fish. Everybody else does not have a marshal down from 95th down. That includes Jason Christie and Seth Fighter and Brandon Lester and Lee Livesey, Keith Combs. Such did get a report that Libacy, uh it's believed that he's got over 15 pounds too. So. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, he yeah. does have his media member shape. with him, so I'm gonna have to get them on the bass track game. And tell me another. Interesting thing. What was something we talked about yesterday was it, it, this this like that you don't get those you know like we would see at Santee Cooper where the bass actually spawn a little bit like bluegill where, where they'll cluster spawn mm -hmm. you know where your boats around you know twenty different beds. That's one thing that Rob Newell kind of laid out for us. He said, "Man, it's a it's a one here, one there, one here, one there gig. You don't see the the honeycombs of beds." You might think that's something that, again, works in favor of the people with years and years of yes. experience here. Yes, yes, totally agree. And, you know, even though Jacob Parazic not being a local back in the day, I remember Jacob Parazic fished a lot of Everstar tournaments on this lake. I don't think he's got a bed. He was just sitting there. Dude, this thing is... A big talking about that big hats off to Carl Jacobson starting to see it's Just taken a long a time for sure. starting to see consistency it's not a great big one but I think you'll help me. Them spots, I think we could pick a few off but I'm just eliminating myself for tomorrow with those spots because they're not too big but hmm. we left them there not for a reason. Give me. Not on purpose. Hey, dude. Well, we left him there. I don't know if he'll help or not. Come here. It's one of them stupid ones. You got a 2-8? Yeah. 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 I said, I'll be dang. Look at that. <laughs>
Yeah, he does, Cole. Well, there you go. You got rid of a 280, so our smallest one should be a three pounder now. I mean, that was just one that I just saw, and it wasn't even on bed, but it was territorial. They getting, they getting uh, protective. <laughs> And uh, it wheeled around on my bait, and I mean, I caught it with that much line out. Yeah. I don't discriminate, I'll catch the dumb ones too. Just got an update from Marshall Michael Boatwright with Buddy Gross. And Buddy Gross has two fish for two and a half pounds right now. Mm. Oh. Not, not what people were expecting. No. Just goes to show you the, the likes of the Brian News, the, the Buddy Grosses, offshore guys that are just not doing well this morning. What Drew Benton said about three, four hours ago when he had 19 pounds of the boat, said, I'm in a great place right now. I don't have yes. any worries today. I can go look for dumb ones. I can go check out anything I want, and there's the music. Oh, yeah. Exactly, and that music right there is gonna mean one thing. We have got Mike McKinnis in the driver's seat, and we are not scared. The power pole replay of the day is gonna be that one, because you could tell looking at guys right now, like Jacob Rosnick, Austin Felix, one good one, one big, big female is gonna go a long way today, talking to Benton, talking to Cook before this tournament, they kinda, really made the comment if you can creep around that 20 to 22 pounds every day you're going to be in position in this tournament well so far today drew benton's done exactly that he is the power pole replay of the day my friend well he's a native of the area here and for drew benton this one is uh, well just like it is for drew cook it's all about family as well drew benton becomes a bassmaster elite series champion at this point in my life, I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my family. You know, that's what gets me going in the mornings. Uh, my wife and my two boys and, and, you know, my mom and dad and my grandparents, they've all stood behind me through this journey. And at this point in my career and this point in my life, I'm doing it for them. And I think when you're doing it for somebody else and not yourself, that's what makes you dangerous. The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Day one rolls on here on Lake Seminole, Bainbridge. Georgia is our fantastic host community here. I heard David Davey talking about Bainbridge is known as the City of Oaks. Uh, heard, about, heard about that, City of Oaks. I can tell you this too, in about a month, six weeks time, this place will be completely covered with azaleas. It is just an what? amazing, startling amount of azaleas here. It's a, a gorgeous, gorgeous place. And uh, Bainbridge, we are, we are so happy to be back after a decade. I had no idea about that azalea info oh, yeah. you just dropped. <laughs> I can remember the second trip I made here. We arrived at the hotel the day before the tournament started. Every angler stands, as most of them, were all gathered around the most unusual thing they'd ever seen before. It was a bass boat with a 250 horse motor. You'd think it was a two headed <laughs> elephant or something like that. Everybody was just sitting there gawking at it. Drew Benton's in second place. He's a local favorite here for sure. That's an understatement. Having a great day today. He is, and he has definitely covered a lot of water. He has bounced 
back and forth from spring to Flint, back to spring, back to Flint. So he's used a lot of his knowledge of this body of water. All right, well, we tried to uh, do some fishing in some of the staging places and uh, didn't get any bites. I just wanted to kind of try something for a little while. We got off to a real fast start. And just to keep it honest, um, I thought if I got a couple really big bites doing that, I could save some of this stuff, but that wasn't the case. So we're back after it up here shallow looking for them and throwing a swim jig and a little swimmer around while we're looking. Um, just found one real dumb one and called out a, a two eight with maybe a three pounder. So our smallest one's three pounds. And um, if we can cull one or two more times, we will be right there around the target weight of, of what I kind of wanted to try to catch today. Um, anything above that would be a bonus. But I'm trying to avoid burning up too many of these sight fish. I've got several that I haven't gone to yet. And I just checked on a couple of them back there. It would have only gave me a pound um, I hate to burn a three pounder with a, a four pounder type thing. So I've got a, a female back here in the back of this thing that was real squirrely acting yesterday whenever I found her. So maybe she's ready and, uh, we can get on her. Boy, he is pretty much laid out the exact game plan that he talked about yesterday. Did not want to be doing this today. The wind seems to have laid down, but we still don't have no sun. You're currently right at 20 pounds. He had been sitting in second place for hours and hours and now He's actually behind Carl Jockums, who officially has oh. 20 and a half pounds to move into second. Behind Mike Tommy, Ocano. we played the played the 20 pound bag game last week. I think Ronnie was the closest on day number one. I think it was 13, 11, wasn't it, Ronnie? Day one, 20 pound 11, bags, yeah. and then 11, 20. Okay. Day two, 11, 20. 20. Day two, yeah. Day 13, day. <laughs> How many today, Tom? I'm going to say, I'm going to say 10. 10? Okay. Yeah, I'll go with that. We got a lot of fishing time left for some of our ones. Oh, yeah. yeah sure. I'll say, I'll say eight. Six. Z? I'm going to take a cradle right in there at nine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I did not, sorry, I did not have my mic on there, Z. I said eight, if you did not hear. Yeah, I'm going to go nine. TH Marine Weather Watch tomorrow's outlook is going to be a high of 85 degrees. Man, this is like we're just skipping spring going right to summer here. Low of 63 wow. tonight. Well, that's tomorrow night. Low of 63. Cloudy tomorrow. Winds 5 to 10 on Saturday. With pretty much the same temperatures, maybe just a touch cooler. So if you want the warm, getting the warm here this week. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, they've had a cooler than average winter leading up to this, which also helps according to the experts on Seminole. Championship Sunday, the same story, different day. It appears the biggest player so far in this tournament, at least with the leaders, uh, it's exactly where we kind of highlighted today, where that you get down near the bottom end of the lake, kind of in between the Hooch and Flint, kind of that fish pond drain to Spring Creek area. That seems to be Every time there's a tournament here, it's just always, and that's a big area. I mean, so it's not like, I mean, that's many, many miles of water there, backwaters. Definitely a player yet again here on day number one. For sight fishing. Um, so when I'm covering water, I'm throwing a swim jig or a cane thumper. And uh, whenever I find one on bed, 
I will uh, swap over to a big bite fighting frog. And I just told myself that I might be able to catch one on a prop bait. I think he, that's a pro Sunny B twin spin by Bagley. And that was the first cast with it. Not a big one, but big ones bite it. Little lure change, it works out. That's your Bass Pro Shop's top lures. Drew Benton. But anyway, um, dang, it acts like there was one under it right there. Seth Fighter was off Bass Trek, but all five of his fish came in at once. He's in 12th place with about 15 and a half pounds, all three pounders range. Well, that's a better outlook than zero, isn't it? Oh, way, <laughs> way better. Yeah. 15 and a half pounds better. By the end of the day, we should have. Man, I sure would like a five pounder. To zero fall, info man. on only three or four guys. Okay. We should we should clear okay. some of these up soon. Nice guy's doing himself a big favor. John Cruz with a five and a half pounder. He was stuck in the with about seven pounds and he gets up over twelve, so he, he really made a big move. One I catch. I thought we'd see him excel here. I don't know exactly why I think that, but seems to fall into his can, territory a little. He can usually figure him out. Yeah. You know, it's so neat to come to different parts of the country. We have two kind of in the Florida region, two in the low country, you know, South Carolina and middle of South Carolina region. Then when we go to Texas, it's always a different look, but the baits that play and to see a prop bait play the way it did in Florida and then to see a prop bait the way Benton's working it, different style, different type working here. It's just like this part of the country, that's just what you do. You just, yeah. you have to keep that honest. Hunter Shrive just caught a couple three pounders. He's in 11th place now, 16 pounds even. You know, and you could really tell how well Benton knows when a fish is not ready. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. You know, you get a lot of questions for folks that watch Bassmaster Live that may not do a lot of bed fishing. And if you really listen to everything from Drew Benton's, you know, conserving, saving fish for tomorrow to his, just his boat position on a bed, that that fine line of you, you want to be as close as you can without disturbing a fish where you can catch them faster but really listening to drew talk about like in the back of this pocket there's a a big female that was not ready yesterday but could be closer to the bed and catchable today it's knowing it's knowing what is catchable and what is not catchable yet you know those are the really small things uh that add up huge a during a sight fishing tournament John Cox, lower right, had a slow start today. Spent a lot of time. Bigger from a while ago, too. At the end of the day, fishing. I'm going to catch that big sucker. But he got That's it on the trophy. deal there. He's back in. Inside the cut line, the cut line tomorrow, actually, when it happens, 50 this year. Until further notice. Oh yeah. 
I caught one on a chatterbait the other day. That tells you how big they are. What has been a painful one so far for Brian New? Mm. I mean, tomorrow's weather getting here early and it's gonna be sunny tomorrow. <laughs> this, they called for cloudy and kind of calming conditions tomorrow. There's only nine million beds I'm throwing this over top of right now. I can't believe it, none of them's come up and got it. Boy, right in front of New, two guys thought we're going to do real well this week. Greg Hackney, Buddy Gross. Still with three and four fish. We're heading on in. Some of our anglers still have a lot of time. Some of them fishing all the way till 5 o'clock in our later flights today. So there's a lot more fish catching on the way. Mike Iaconelli, now unofficially still in the lead. 21 pounds and four ounces. Jockamson in second place. Benton, Kelly, and Felix rounding out our top five. Yeah! A water! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Oh, it'd mean everything to win here. I grew up fishing this place. This is such a legendary uh, lake. You know, Jack Winget and all of them, they, they started bass right here. Um, and actually, the, the first meeting that they ever had was, was right there in that room. And that is, you know, some piece of history that, you know, we don't need to forget about. Without this place, you know, Ray Scott and, and Jack Winget and all of them, we wouldn't have what, what I do for a living right now. Um, but just to do it in front of my hometown, uh, you know, my crowd, all my friends and, and family that are going to be here, uh, you know, it'd mean, it'd mean the world. Jack Wingate in his Lunker Lodge, the first resource that Ray Scott touched on when he had the first tournament he was putting together up on Beaver Lake in northwest Arkansas, pre-Bassmaster, but his very first called it the All-American and Jack Wingate got on the phone yep. with him and rounded up some some big sticks from the southeast. That was a that was a pivotal moment for sure. Very very cool spot. Uh, like he nailed it, man. That is kind of where professional bass fishing started. Whenever you launch your boat there, you, it's just a very very cool vibe. That's where it really all began. I got a little trivia with that. How many of the 106 guys who fished that first All American were from Jack Wingate's Rolodex? His phone numbers. Did you Ray know Scott how got? many? The, the yeah, number? It's been reported. Yes. I, yes, I yes. wouldn't. Twenty. Uh, I'll give you a couple of choices. Twelve, eighteen, twenty-two, or twenty-seven. Okay. Anglers. I'm came sticking from, with twenty. No, I'm just kidding. Twenty-two. 22. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One fifth of the field. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty dang good. Coming all the way from Oof. Florida border to yeah. Beaver Lake in Northwest Arkansas. For some. Something as new and wild as a fishing tournament. How about that back in the day? I remember Bob Cobb uh, reporting that the, they got the Tulsa and Memphis teams, anglers, bass anglers, fired up to compete against each other. Yeah, yeah. That brought a lot of anglers in the event. Also reading a lot about Drew Cook's first uh, tournament. His first BASS event was the Open here in 2015. And he said he went behind Gerald Swindle called an eight, caught an eight pounder. And was just like, I can fish behind a guy like Gerald Swindle and, and do well. Him and uh, Drew Benton finished one ounce apart in that event. Wow. 22nd, 23rd, I believe.
Don't mess up and do that now. A little higher skies for Drew Benton. I'm sure he's wanting a little more of that. Expecting it to kind of look like this tomorrow and the See next if I can day get as well. Better look at him. Make sure I ain't fishing for a little one. I saw his tail that time and it didn't look like a little one. <laughs> I mean, it looked like a, at least a four pounder. But it's hard to say. Uh-huh. We'll see if he calls. If he don't call, we'll put him back, catch him tomorrow. It ain't one that I already had marked, so it ain't like I'm burning one. Is being in his boat today. Ooh. A lot of these spawners he's catching. A lot <laughs> of these spawners are on flats. Yeah, it's you know, not matter. along the bank in a canal or these are a lot harder to find if you do not know this see, lake. I can just kind of see a, the shiny spot where to throw. It had it right there. The more it miles that bait though, the more confidence it gets. I think so. Got to be a yeah, at least. He totally knew that fish was going to bite on that cast because he looked behind him. To knowing he was going to set the hook. That one had picked it up and dropped it a couple of times, I think. Yeah. It's a good one. We need to look at. I don't know. Yeah, it's green. Green's got to go. And 
he for sure. Ain't smaller than this one, huh? four-pounder there. If he just called that fish, he's got a really good stringer. Let me put him over here because he is <laughs> definitely... I don't know, to be honest with you. Yep. A little over three and a quarter. Jonathan Kelly with a 310, calls up to 21 pounds and one ounce, second place behind Ike, three ounces back. Man. What you got me at? Yeah. That's pretty close if I don't have 21. Pushing on here into the afternoon, Mike Iaconelli still on top there, but look at Jonathan Kelly for a guy who lists his home lake as Lake Oneida. He may have spent a few happy hours fishing down here in Florida well, through the years, you've uh, got I, I suspect. Plenty of college events around yeah. Seminole during his time of fishing, and also Santee will be a home lake because he went to Coastal Carolina, so oh, he's yeah. got some southern knowledge. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. A little bit of insider in there, info there from Ronnie Moore. <laughs> Carl Jockinson having another great tournament. That's two in a row to start out 2023. Drew Benton hanging in there in fine fashion and all the rest, and we'll be back with more just moments away. 
It is coming up fast, just a month away. Maybe a day or two more than a month away, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, the World Championship, presented by Toyota and the Tennessee River. Fort Loudon and Teleco, Knoxville, Tennessee, will be the host city. It is a terrific host city. They set the record when we were back there three years back and uh, got beaten at Blake Hartwell last the last classic and we'll see if they can take it back again. Boy, they had like a lot of people there, especially in the morning to take off from volunteer landing was just a spectacle. It was uh, so much humanity out there and just a, a great, great place to have a classic. We can't wait to get back there. I'm not, I'm exactly. not saying there's a rivalry Z, but Tennessee Volunteers bested Clemson in the bowl game. Can Tennessee vo uh, Volunteers beat the Clemson record that we had, you know, in Greenville last year? Kyle Welker, oh. second place at that classic there by seven, I think seven ounces maybe? Five. Five ounces. Oh, yeah. heartbreaker. Heartbreaker you know, for him. Really what was weird about that tournament is Jason Christie was sitting on hundreds of bass days one and two. Remember that, Tommy? Looking yeah. at him on his front facing sonar. And for the majority of the day, until Christie went docking and just grinded out a solid limit, we had Kyle Welcher pretty much in the driver's seat, yeah. by far and away, True. Kyle Welcher's best tournament of the 22 season. Yeah, the door was wide open with Christie not catching them early, only having that one keeper. You had Welcher, you had Blaylock, Luke Palmer had a time in the top five for a while there. Lee Livesey tried to make a run. One of the closest classics, not, I mean, in history, but oh, well, but definitely in the last close decade. Enough. Last in the, yeah. My goodness, only his third year. And on the Bassmaster Elite Series, it would have been a been a big thing for him right there. I know it was a big disappointment just to come that short. Yeah, you know, that's, <clears throat> it's just cool to be in contention for the biggest tournament in the world, you know? Like, I felt like I fished a pretty complete tournament. I caught them all three days. I never had a day where I really stumbled, but, you know, it, it really pains me this year that I'm not able to fish it, honestly. Like, I want another crack at it because I'm going to get one eventually. But if you're not in them, you definitely ain't going to win one. But it's just a cool tournament with, with so much stuff going on. It really favors the people that jump around and kind of try to fish fast and get in front of the fish more often than not. So I like the way the tournament sets up. I like how the practice is kind of far away from the tournament. Then you get one kind of almost like a half practice day. So I use it as kind of three days to really scout the lake, look, you know, look over it, figure out kind of the patterns I think will work and where everything is on the lake. And then whenever I start getting on something in the tournament, I know where to run it. So for me, I fish a little bit different than some people, but it's just awesome to be in contention in that type of tournament. That's what we all strive for every single year. Cal Wilcher holding his own today. Just one spot out of the top 10 right now and within six pounds of the lead. So Kyle Wilcher looking to have a much better year than he had uh, in the wake of that near, near miss at the Classic in 2022. Uh, right now, we've got the whole crew here together and we're gonna go out on the water and pick up uh, a third of our uh, compadres here and that is gonna be Davey. Hi, there's Davey right there. We were looking for Davey. Ah. Davey? Uh, last week at Okeechobee, I mean, we saw some great performances, but no one could repeat it. It was that typical Florida here today, gone tomorrow sort of thing. No, we, did, we had a different leader each and every day. Is that a possibility of happening here? Do you think that's less likely here? Well, I thought coming in, Tommy, that it would be less likely, but it sure is shaping out, up like this because there's there's a lot going on, but there's no one thing that you can just put your finger on right now and say that's going to be the, the key to winning this event. Davey, real quick for some of the folks that maybe don't know what has transpired this week on Seminole, you look at somebody like Drew Benton, who a lot of his bass, I made this comment before the last commercial break, a lot of his bass, are bass that are spawning out on flats. Even though the weather dictates, they should be coming to the bank. You don't see Drew Benton concentrating on the actual shoreline. Talk about the water level and what happened earlier this week that might be holding a lot of those bank fish back. <clears throat> well, Z, I think uh, the main thing that has happened is the water level has been dropping, dropping, dropping. 
and last night it stabilized. I was actually talking to Drew Benton this morning before takeoff. It, it rose about a tenth, a tenth and a half. Last night is the first time, so that stabilized. So that's a good thing. But but when you're talking about holding those fish back, with the water level dropping, it was like I think the second day of practice it seemed to drop about six or maybe even eight inches those fish don't want to move into those shallow areas and, and spawn and you know there's a lot of thoughts of why they don't want to do that you know worried about like getting trapped or but i don't really think that's the case i think they they sort of know with that falling water level because it's real important to have a certain amount of light penetration for those eggs to to develop and to hatch so i think they just don't want to push up there and actually spawn until that water stabilizes if they can help it now there will come a time no matter what the water's doing they'll actually go up there and, and spawn but what drew benton's doing is, is is excellent here on lake seminole the very first time i came here way back in the 90s fishing event a lot of the fish were caught offshore inside edges some vegetation spawning so there's the majority of fish in my opinion here at Seminole don't go actually to the bank in these little canals to spawn most of them do spawn out there only in maybe two to four feet of water but on those big expansive flats Davey last week we saw really big stringers obviously on days one and most of all day two on Okeechobee with the way the water is stabilizing as you said a little bit and consistent warming throughout this tournament is this actually one of those rare spawning events that you see weights possibly going up as we go into the weekend i, I do z and, and the reason and, and i think a lot of the the leaders in this event day one through day four are going to be catching a lot of their fish uh, looking at them spawning fish but just like mike iconelli this morning i think we'll have and i certainly hope we'll have one or two anglers every morning that really pops, you know, 20 plus pounds in the first, you know, two hours of the event. Drew Benton and Drew Cook were expecting to do that this morning. Those fish had moved on. But there again, a, a lot of that was because I don't think all of those fish just went to the bank and spawned. A lot of that is because the current has slowed down in that area. When they found those fish is when that water was falling. There was a lot more current moving through there. So just finding another place, holding those fish. I don't think all of them have gone up there to spawn just relocating some of those big groups of fish and catching those big stringers to start with and then go sight fish the rest of the day looking for only the real big ones. Davey, one more quick question. I hear through the grapevine some way or another that you may be qualified to give a little preview of uh, next week's event at Lake Eufaula, the Q Series cranking up up there. Do you want to you care to uh, give us a little prediction or two about that? Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to that event. You know, that's where I won my first Bassmaster event. A lot of memories there on Lake Eufaula. My son lives only about 20 miles from there, so I got to spend a day or two with him. But knowing Joe Durham, and Mark Zona, you know him, uh, that's a pretty good friend to have if you're around Lake Eufaula, that's for sure. It's going to be good. Davey, I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty <laughs> sure, Davey, you won that tournament with a spinner bait on Rip Rap, not how you caught them yesterday on Lake Eufaula. I did catch him on a spinnerbait, but not riprap. But I, I couldn't help but throw a spinnerbait. I was close. Davey, always in the game, always in the game. That's what makes him so good. We, we, we wouldn't do his job if he wasn't always in the game. Thank you, Davey Hyten. <laughs> we turn it over now to the Dakota Lithium screen of knowledge and Ronnie Moore. Well, Tommy, Z, thank you guys for those follow-up questions because Davey Height was right there about to get out of that without actually giving any kind of info <laughs> about you, Fala. I'm glad you got that question out of him, Z Train. But that is that leads us into uh, the screen of knowledge here at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge that going into the Opens next week, we kick off our Open season, more eyeballs on this series because of the ramifications that come for it. You can fish one division like in the past for a classic opportunity. Three shots at a Bassmaster Classic whether you're fishing Division One, Two, or Three throughout the year. But if you want to make the Bassmaster Lead Series, you have to fish all nine Bassmaster Opens. That's where the points race becomes the EQ, the Elite Qualifier Points Race. You got to fish all nine to have a shot at the big leagues. We're going to go from places from Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Missouri. You're going to go up towards the north in Virginia and New York, and then also in the season around Tennessee. But our first stop of the season is at Lake Eufaula. Down the road, or I guess 
guess, up the road, up to Chattahoochee from where we are at Lake Seminole this week. Lake Eufaula, 45,000 acres. It's a, almost 10,000 more acres than we're seeing at Seminole. And honestly, the entire lake plays. This is one of the hottest lakes in the country, whether you're coming in June, July, August, and it's offshore bite, brush pile deal, or you're in a pre-spawn time where maybe a spinnerbait, bladed jig, crankbaits, things like that play. That should be a great playing field for the anglers. Stop number one, March 2nd through the 4th. You can catch the coverage next week, Thursday through Saturday on Bassmaster.com. Obviously lead up as well. I'll be there in attendance to kind of see how this EQ field stacks up. 175 anglers all competing for nine spots in the Elite Series for next year's season. And honestly, Lake Eufaula is going to be a great playing field that we will see uh, next week for the, Bass, the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. So excited to be there on that one. And like we said, Eufaula is fishing great right now. On some of these three days, four day events, it's t it takes 22 to 24 pounds to, to lead or win. We've seen different ABA tournaments in the past that you almost hit a century club in the summer for four days, so I can only imagine. Wouldn't make me mad if the Bassmaster Elite Series was to return there yes. sometime soon. Can you make that happen? Hey, I run? think I that can. I can, you know, I don't know if I can sit down in front of the mayor or the, or the governor, but we can probably talk to the hosts there and see their interest of that. But wouldn't be a bad Definitely thing. Definitely good to shine a light early in the season on places like Okeechobee, Seminole, and Eufaula yes. that are just fishing history, yeah. Z. Well, and that gentleman, Joe Durham, you've met him, Tommy, actually. Mm -hmm. His yep. warrior team does a lot of conservation on that lake, but they also, they plant a, they plant a lot of brush piles out there. So uh, don't be surprised if that actually plays next week because uh. there was a there was a tournament kind of blown away last week by that individual, so never know. Maybe that might play too. Who knows? And I'll also say false spring, as Drew Cook calls it. It's kind of unseasonably warm this week in Seminoles region. Same goes for Eufaula. It'll continue to extend with the lows around 55 to 60 at night, highs around 80, all the way until the middle of day two of the event. It'll get a little chillier and a little more rainy and wet going into the final day or the top 10 next Saturday. But obviously weather can change, but it looks like the forecast for practice gonna be great. And they start practice on Saturday. They kind of emulating the Elite Series with a 30 day off limits from day one of competition. So about a three and a half week break from mm -hmm. the lake. And yeah. uh, then you can start practice on Saturday. Sunshine on Drew Benton right there makes you want to keep your eyes on him. Well, how about a guy like Matt Airy? He was stuck near 70th. Six pound, eight ounce fish came in. He's up wow. 15 pounds total. Jump up to 18th place. Man, let's salvage your day in the afternoon. Catch a big one. Lots of fishing time left. Ooh. That one ain't a bad one either. Be a one for tomorrow. A lot of practicing going on in Drew Benton's boat now. Talking to him and Cook, they kind of had that target weight tw hang around that 21 to 22 pounds every day. And he's pretty much there for day number one of this tournament. Starting to mark a few for tomorrow. See, we haven't talked too much about what's available out there. You know, last last week we had, you know, always the possibility of someone bringing in eight, eight plus into the boat. Not so many, not so probable here, right? It's not, I mean, we got a bunch of five and six, but not not those big giant tankers, right? I don't know, man. I, they're, but yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Not, not like Okeechobee, but man, there were some pictures posted of some oh. pretty good ones this All week. Right. Bernie Schultz had the uh, big one when we were back here, and he's uh, got 14 pounds today, 23rd place. How big was his big fish? That was going to be a trivia question. You remember? 10 pounder. 10, 10, 10. pounder. Yeah. Yeah, it was a monster. He's the uh, highest returning finisher from that elite. And I saw a GoPro video place. yesterday of that tournament. Uh, Jason, the, the, the previous tournament, Jason Christie losing a big giant. Uh, right there at the boat, which uh, would also. Well, here's some of those stories that weigh in today. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh. Not the loss, I hope for, just the fact that they're there. 
No, Such will continue to bring up the loss for sure. Oh. <laughs> I'm just yes. It's news. On the other side of this little island, I saw a big old female up there yesterday just sunning. Maybe she'll buy this dipper. And there's another, another thing, ball Tommy. Up here that, uh, a lot of these spawning flats, pad fields, stuff that we've watched Drew Benton in today. He hadn't had a lot of company around him at all. Uh -huh. You're right. You're right. Fantasy uh, pick, Patrick Walters just finished his limit with a two pounder. He's got eight and a half. A little Oof. disappointing. Such, since lunchtime, you have just been tormenting me with updates uh, of my fantasy team. Did you pick team. him on the fantasy I team? I do right? not oh. appreciate it. It was right oh. there. See a couple beds there. Loppy on that one. Still got some fishing time left in our Bassmaster Live show as well. Before we take a break, wow. let's take a look at our leaderboard with Carl Jockamson on top, having overtaken Michael Iaconelli. What a two weeks it has been for the man from Australia. Look, Jonathan Kelly, second year man in third place, having a great day. The rookie Will Davis in there, a lot of variety up and down that. Drew Benton, we've been with him all along. Austin Felix, the guys just below the top 10 include a Seth Fighter and a Takumi Ito. Interesting day. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by TH Marine. Our Bassmaster Live show is scheduled to have about a half an hour's more of fishing coverage live for you from Lake Seminole. Day one of this Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite. We'll try to make the best of our time first with a look at the leaderboard. And there he is, Australia's own Carl Jockinson, coming off a sixth place finish last week at Lake Okeechobee. What a great start to his season he is having right now. Iconelli held the lead for the, most, the longest time today. Just uh, surrendered that in the last hour. And I think uh, Carl Jockinson is, is due for some yes. accolades here, Mark Zona. Indeed he is, friendo. <laughs> Gonna start with your marathon peak performance here on day number one. Carl Jockinson starting his day out big with a five pound, eight ounce at about 8.30 and then anchoring it 1.11 p.m. A six pounder marathon peak performance. You nailed it, Tommy. Coming off a top 10 finish, Lake Okeechobee, where they're there was potential if he would have blown out another big bag on Championship mm -hmm. Sunday. Actually, could have bowed for the win on Okeechobee. Marathon peak performance, great to see. The consistency that Carl showed us last year, picking it up yet again. First tournament Okeechobee, and here on Seminole, marathon peak performance, Carl Jacobson looking at all of our anglers on the map. The interesting thing with Carl, sort of off the beaten path and left alone. And right there, you're looking at your top five anglers in this tournament so far, day number one on Lake Seminole. That is your marathon peak performance. All right, spread between them all and Carl Jacobson in a month's time. We'll be headed to uh, what we've been talking about, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic too. So we'll be looking for him and the rest of our 55 anglers, is it there? 55 total, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Drew Cook, obviously one of the heavy favorites. Going to need a big afternoon mm. to stay in contention to win this thing. There we go. There we go. I barely got her. I mean, barely got her. I mean, I barely had her, but I had her, you know? God, it's supposed to be loaded with these out here. spawn fish taking a look at that bass right there from drew cook and starting tommy to see him rechecking some of those little mm. hard spots that he started off on this morning just kind of had a little bit of a dead spell for about three hours late morning for drew cook big big afternoon Drew so consistent over the first two and a half days at Okeechobee, and then things sort of bottom kind of dropped out. And still a top 10 finish there. Maybe he can have the reverse happen here, start a little slow and finish stronger. You get a really, really good look. See where Drew Benton is. You just call it the Spring Creek area. A lot cleaner water compared to guys like Welcher and Cook. Go check this female Fishing in the Flint. Here. Benton said he's going to go check another female. Maybe get a late upgrade or save it for tomorrow based on what he thinks his smallest is. That's kind of the thing that we're, we see guys in sight fishing events that can check those is, Tommy, if you have a three, three and a half pounder and you have a four up there, do you go risk it to go from 21 to 22 today or do you know you have a four pounder to go catch? And hopefully they stay there and the warm night doesn't expedite the process or expedite the process and, you, and they're gone, you know. That's the, the balance that these guys practicing have to take. That's brutal. Drew informed us earlier today, and Mark Zona pointed out that uh, if they're male, they're more likely to hang around. Yep. If you're female, could be definitely be gone without much notice. Yeah, and the one thing that we talked with Davey about is, you know, <laughs> Tommy, you and I have called a couple spawning tournaments the Ooh. last 20 years, yeah. and generally, the first two days are fun, and then it mm -hmm. kind of takes a dive into Saturday, and especially on Sunday, but really with this consistent warming trend, maybe that will stay consistent all the way to the end of this event, because traditionally they do not. Now, calendar-wise, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Z, we're early. I mean, traditionally, we're early, but the weather the weather has sort of balanced that out, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 these are historic, and not only that, Tommy, here, I guess the, the most bizarre thing is how long these warming trends are. Yeah. You know, these warming trends are two weeks straight of, of very, very warm days and, and stable e evenings. With, you know, usually you're going to see a lows in the high 40s or low 50s at least one night you're seeing none of that right now yeah.
I get, my point is, besides the, the water level dropping early this week, there's nothing right now weather-wise to knock these fish back. Nothing. I don't know if it was on that one. And that map you've seen of our unofficial top five in this tournament right now Really, if you look at the top 12, it, they're spread out really well right now from Hooch to Fish Pond Drain and the Spring Creek all the way into the Flint. So a lot of the system at play today. Phoenix Boat's big bass leader was earlier today in the morning session. It's Austin Felix with a 7.5. That's still holding up for now. I've never seen this many little fish out here. I really don't know which bed it was on. Could have been that one. sort of a real-time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year tracker on the, on the Bass Track page. If you haven't noticed it, it's the column to the far right. I want to check it out. And if you look at it, fourth place, Will Davis Jr. Pretty sure it's that The one. rookie is... Uh, I think I just saw wow. him on it. In second place, Angler of the Year. That's a strong rookie show. Yeah. We're going to see a dog fight for that Rookie of the Year race this year. With Logan Latuso making yeah. the cut. Will Davis having a good event. Got some guys salvaging their tournaments last week. We had five rookies, which I said last year was four to six was what we saw a lot in the events out of out of ten or eleven. Saw five rookies make the cut plus a newcomer with Bradley Hallman. So you got half of the half of the new guys making the top fifty. You're gonna have to catch them when you get the chance. You're gonna have to catch them big. Ellie literally has not moved all day long. <laughs> if you, you look at where Kyle Welcher is, I believe that is actually Iconelli right in the background. Uh oh. Welcher's been in there really 75% uh, of his here. day. If it ain't a big tilapia, it's just so windy. I don't have no sun. I could have swore I saw it turn on its side and I was easing up there and I saw its lateral line, but I'm not 100%. There's a lot of tilapia beds right here. These things just won't let you get close enough to look at them. And they're this shallow.
Give him another look just to make sure I ain't fishing for a tilapia. Ask you map watchers if Carl Jockamson has been moving around a lot today. His catches have been kind of sporadic all over the map. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and, but kind of that sure off looks the like beaten a path. Bed. Last week, bunkering in on a single place was uh, the common thread in all of the big performances. Uh, it's different this yes. week. I mean, yes. we got guys who've, who've got a million places. There's more places to go this week, frankly. Let's go run check another one. I got. Well, you watch Drew Benton. It's been fun to watch him today. His head is absolutely on a swivel. Drew got his first Bassmaster Elite Series win last year, along with a century belt to go with it. And a place we're headed back to after the Classic this year, Santee Cooper. And so far today, those little hard spots with a lipless and a bladed jig. So. Drew Cook and Ben oh really gosh, thought they could catch a giant stringer doing this. Vet had pretty steady this morning, got a little bit a little bit cooler, cooled off a little bit later on. Frickin' vegans. Let's go! Let's go! They're all that size in here, dude. Oh. That was the best bite of the day, oh, Tommy. That was, far. that was astounding. Oh, that was great. Great camera work from Brian Eby. That is great oh. stuff, man. Wow, let's look at that again. Oof. Oh, that is awesome. Unreal. I mean, moving some water. That was a good shot. Everything's going right for Ravette this season, Tommy. Oh my gosh. And for and for our unofficial <laughs> leader. Talk about a day changer right there too. For for Tyler Rivette, man, amazing.
Well, I'll tell you what's starting to get real hot, like dripping, dripping hot. Oh, I know as what we you're said talking last about. year. Yeah, so you know warm. exactly what it is. Oh, absolutely. That. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. What? We, got, oh, we got another what? attraction right oh, here. Man. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Tommy, you notice he cuts them high, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, he cuts them high. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Armed and dangerous. He's what feeling is going it on? in many ways. Yeah, exactly. What is going on here? All right. What is going the on? The people what they want, I guess, is what it's all about in this business. And man, we want to see a big bass, and we got it. He just cut his sleeves <laughs> off. Hey, you got your priorities. Oh, my goodness. That Yeti hot seat, yes. Warm, warm, and so yeah. oh, boy, uncomfortable. But Jockham said wouldn't trade it for anything. Man on top of our leaderboard. Weigh-in <laughs> starting at 3.30 Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. After we complete the fishing on day one here on Lake Seminole. Man, oh, man, don't miss the weigh-in. See who makes it with the big ones tomorrow. The Gamakatsu Bassmaster Elite at Lake Seminole is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalon. Got a few scant minutes of our fishing time left for you today on our live broadcast, but uh, stay in touch with Bassmaster.com. Stay in touch with uh, Bass Track because, uh, you know, there may be a late bite here. We're finding all these things out as we go along, but uh, the music, there it is. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. And we're going to get, look, there is going to be some discrepancy. It's not Drew Benton, my friend. It is Tyler oh. Rebecca coming off a big victory. Tyler Rivette catching this. I'm talking about Seminole stud. A few minutes ago, pushing a ton of water, decides to cut his shirt in pieces in the gun show, as <laughs> Dave Mercer calls it. And, and Tommy, there is word that Brian Evey, cameraman Brian Evey, who's been in Rivette's boat for a week, uh, is going to start lifting. Brian Evey only has five inch guns. Tyler Rivette going to school him up. All That's right. your college goal. That's good. Yeah, it'd be really nice. He gets to That's teach him really how to nice. cut those shirts off in the like, yeah, little exactly. Agner style. Bold up. <laughs> Wanted to bring it in for the last uh, Dakota Lithium screen and knowledge hit for the day and kind of give an update on those who have been looking at Bash Track trying to decipher who has zero, who has no Marshall, is someone actually struggling? It looks like for the most part our leaderboard is pretty accurate. Jason Christie doesn't have a Marshall today. Brandon Lester doesn't have a Marshall. Those are two big names we'll keep an eye on at the bottom. But is there for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and Mercury Drain the Lake, is there a little bit of a cause for concern? The fact that Greg Hackney down at the bottom of the leaderboard Board. David Mullins as well, Brian New, Chris Zaldane, and Keith Poche. A couple names that people thought of for sure that would factor Poche, just his way of fishing possibly up the river, what it could do for him or his, his mentality of that. Another John Cox 2.0. David Mullins, we talked about it. David Mullins, Brian New, some of these guys were picked out by a Drew Cook earlier in this week as winders. Guys that were fishing offshore, probably looking at some fish, getting on those pre-spawn bites. That has dissipated. It has been a, you know, not a complete offshore game, a shallower to bank bite for a lot of our anglers. And that's why I'm surprised that Greg Hackney has not caught them today so far. Chris Aldane loves throwing big baits, loves mixing it up deep and shallow. A couple causes for concern for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and Drain the Lake, a high percentage guys and guys that were possibly picked to win this week have not shown up on day one. One thing I will say, Greg Hackney, 100th place on day one in 2014 here. Moved up to 42nd. Such with the stats there helping me out. And then finished the event in the 30s. That is the way you rebound. And that was how he won Angler of the Year that year, moving from 100th to 40th. So these guys, maybe they all can come from 100th to the 40s or 50s after tomorrow's weigh-in. Saw some mighty moves up the leaderboard last week at Okeechobee. Yeah, it could also move flop, mighty moves man, down the leaderboard as well. There's going to be some guys definitely looking at their graphs tonight, looking at the map and figuring out where they need to go to reconnect with what they may have found or just scrap the game plan completely. Yeah, Bill Lowen jumped 70 spots in one day, and then Rivette just jumped about 35 spots with that six pounder. <laughs> it feels nice now. 
My arms could breathe. They've been tucked in all day, waiting for the right time. This looks froggy, if you know what I mean. Look froggy. I need another six, because my small one, I think, is still under two pounds. That put us nice. That put us maybe with you and me again. Jeez, how long you want to stay with me, bud? That fish definitely saved us for sure from bombing for today. Just think of the 30 others I threw at like that. Crazy. Love to leave here, go back to that spot where we started, catch her, so I ain't even have to worry about stopping there in the morning. That way I could come straight here and hopefully wreck them. All right, give you what you want. I know you're waiting. I know you're waiting on it. Almost 70 degree water. Yeah, that'd eat a frog. If I miss another one on this, it's on you. It on me. Y'all at? Well, that was a great way to finish the day. Still a little bit of time left mm -hmm. for Tyler Rivette, but man, one of the best catches of the day. Absolutely. And, and Tommy, it's uncanny. Every single spot we've been in today, granted, we'll be with all the leaders tomorrow. Yep. Every spot just looked absolutely awesome. It did. Seen some great fish catches today. Some great performances by Drew Benton. Let's keep on key going. decision right. and good. putting himself right near the top there. Tyler Rivette living the dream in 23, no doubt about it. That was great, great day of fishing. Great day of fishing. Got the weigh-in coming up. We remind you, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Oh. Dave Mercer's gonna be uh, holding court there. Bringing it all to you tomorrow. Don't forget, we'll be right back here, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Bassmaster.com. We're live for seven hours. Lake Seminole, we've been waiting and waiting year after year to come back to this place. And Let's go. Very, very happy to be here. Let's go. Happy we've had you with us today for Bassmaster Live. We want to see you tomorrow. It will be a lot of fun, and we will kick it off again at 8 o'clock. See you then.